don't think it's fair to say that TLC has done nothing. TLC has worked um, extremely, extremely hard over the past few years to uh, help drivers, to help owners, to help the entire industry. And it has been difficult, and it hasn't always been successful, of course. But we've given a tremendous, we've been given a tremendous, really well. We were just given the to cap the number of vehicle licenses. That, that was a huge missed opportunity. I think that could have started the problems here. Not all of them, a lot of them. And, and we all missed the opportunity, but we took that back and we did it in 2018. And as I said, we've leveled the playing field. We've required the app companies to shoulder the burden of operating, of having the privilege to operate and carry passengers in New York City. So we have subjected them to rules from the beginning, and we've expanded that, and we've subjected them to, uh, to data requirements, again, unlike any other city in the country, wheelchair accessible, Commissioner, that, that, that has nothing to do with what I'm asking about. That's not, it's irrelevant to the subject of this city. hearing. Um, you are correct. I think it's very relevant. You are correct. Well, I think it's, it's very relevant. Oh. I think it should, I think it is the subject of this hearing. The subject of the hearing. The subject of the, the, subject hearing, of the hearing is are all these drivers role. who do not have the worry-free retirement that you promised them. That's the subject of this hearing. But I want to... Now you're and correct that TLC does not act out of its own volition. TLC, Commissioner, taken, let me finish. If you look at the Commissioner, steps, let me finish. You just, you just Commissioner. made an accusation. If you look at the steps that we have taken yeah. since 2014, you, you, the, to say TLC that failed we have done to prevent nothing the to help uh, the, to help financially drivers in the city is simply untrue. You, you can ask and the drivers. I will. I will I will we, go to the yeah, end. Sure. I will defend my record, um, and I will defend TLC's um, record. I'm incredibly proud of that record. Okay. I'm incredibly. Um, uh, uh, it's just, I'll, I'll conclude my first round of questioning just by pointing out it seems to me the city, not only TLC, but the city, has the same perverse incentives as the predatory brokers and the lenders and the speculators, just like the brokers, lenders, and speculators were willing to destabilize the medallion market to generate short-term profits, the city, including TLC, the regulator, was willing to do the same to generate short-term revenues. Uh, and that, to me, is disgraceful. So I, I'll, I'll conclude my first round of question. Thank you. Thank you, Chair Torres. I would like to also acknowledge that we've been joined by Councilmember Deutsch, Espinal, and Levin. Commissioner, in 2014, when they those medallions were sold when TLC was uh, advertising. Did TLC have any idea that we were in the middle of the devaluation of the value of the medallion? I'm not sure what TLC was aware of in 2014. I wasn't there, and I'm, I'm, I'm not sure what went into that decision-making process. So when you look to, when did you join TLC? 2015. 2015. So, now conversation have happened that you've been engaged in TLC about the devaluation of the medallion. I think there were news reports at the time that there were there were issues with some medallion loans that that happened at some point in 2014. Okay, because I feel that one of the concern, which is a legitimate concern. Uh, that many of those, especially individual medallion owners have, especially that groups who vote those medallions in 2014, is that how much did the city knew about the devaluation of the medallion when the TLC was advertising opportunity for people to buy those medallions? I, I understand the question. I can't give you any insight into what was on people's minds at that time. Okay. How does TLC monitor potential conflict between brokers uh, acting in mu uh, multiple roles in the industry? 
I'm going to actually ask Chris to answer that because he's more familiar with the broker licensing system. And um, our brokerage our brokerage rules do require that um, brokers who have a conflict of interest in a transfer um, disclose those transfers to the parties to the transaction. We're currently undergoing a review of all of the broker documentation for the last three years to determine whether or not those rules were complied with. How, how many brokers have been denied license or have, or have had their license revoked or suspended? Uh, based on TLC fitness determination in the past 15 years and out of how many actions have been brought? We've licensed 20 now. I'm not, a, I'm not aware that we've revoked any. No one? I don't think so. Have TLC identified some issue in that area of the fact that no one license has been revoked because no one is doing anything wrong. Sure, as I said, the mayor has ordered that the TLC in partnership with Department of Consumer uh, Affairs and Labor Relations as well as the Department of Finance undergo a 45-day review of the role of brokers, so we're currently going through that. We're looking at all the documentation we get from brokers and we're looking at, at whether they have followed the, uh, we, we, to the extent to which they made the disclosure requirements that are necessary that they make to purchasers. We're also looking at, as I'm sure City Council is, or I know they are through the legislation, what further steps can we take to strengthen um, that oversight? Yeah. Has TLC received any complaints about broken brokers from license? There have been complaints, but not as many complaints as you might think. I believe it's a low number. But obviously, they have obviously there have been complaints to other people. There are complaints in the New York Times article. So obviously, there have been people who have complained. How big do you categorize the crisis of the numbers of individual medallions owner going into bankruptcy? Again, I'm not, I can't tell you how many people might be, you're asking me how many people are going into bankruptcy? Right now, from the 6,000 individual medallion owners, how many do I, you know? I wouldn't, I wouldn't know that number of how many people are, are, are on the verge of going into bankruptcy. When there is a transfer as a result of a bankruptcy, then that comes to us, so there could be bankruptcy proceedings now that we're not aware of. Do you think that that number and I don't want to put you in the spot, but it's based about the information that you have. Do you think that on the, from the 6,000 individual medallion owners, do you think that number raised like to 500, 1,000? I don't know the exact number. I'm, I'm sure that it is very painfully high. So who from TLC is responsible to get those information or who of those individual medallions owner has filled out from for bankruptcy? Again, my understanding is that we would learn about a bankruptcy proceeding, unless we are named as a party in a bankruptcy proceeding, which um, may happen mistakenly. My understanding is, and Chris, you should step in, my understanding is we would only learn about a bankruptcy proceeding um, when, it, when uh, the asset uh, needed to be transferred, when the medallion needed to be transferred. So that's when we would find out. We're obviously trying to find out more about this right now. As you know, last year, one of the things that City uh, Council asked us to do was to do a study of medallion and medallion debt. Uh, we've sent out a survey to all medallion owners. We're having these regular meetings uh, in all of the boroughs with medallion owners and getting as much information as we possibly can from them. Mm -hmm. How do you see the future of this industry? How do you, what conversation are you having internally about rescuing or helping those men and women, especially from the 15,000, the 6,000 individual medallion owners? 
Well, we're having a lot of conversations about it, and we've taken a lot of steps. Um, as I said, with the dri there were the driver assistance centers that were set up under Councilman Salamanca's legislation. The mayor just announced, or the services had to be offered. The mayor just announced we're formalizing that into driver assistance centers. We just def announced that we're not collecting medallion renewal fees. As you know, through legislation last year, we stopped collecting renewal fees on wheelchair accessible medallions. We're so we're doing this broker review. We're setting up what I described earlier as the business practices accountability unit. So all of these are steps that we're doing to intensify the work, the outreach that we do to drivers, the work we do on their behalf, providing not only connecting them with available city services, but also providing them with direct services, including credit counseling, people who can go and advocate on their behalf to the credit unions and to the other holders of these loans. Do you think that TLC should be reorganized? Do I think that TLC should be reorganized? I, uh, no, I don't. I think TLC is a very good and strong agency. I think every agency always has things that it can do better. Some of the things we're talking about today, Please, guy. some of the things that are the subject of the legislation that you've introduced, so I don't think it's a question of reorganizing. I think it's a question of examining our priorities. The priorities uh, are set not only by us and by our commissioners, they're set by the mayor, and as I said, they're also set by city council, and you've set quite a few for us uh, in the past year. So it may be a question of do we have the resources we need to fulfill all of these? Do you know any about any members that they used to be part of TLC that then later on joined Uber or Lyft? Yes, I'm, I, I am aware that some people who worked at TLC uh, have worked for license, have gone on to work for stakeholders, licensees, however you call them. But not as the investor level, no as a I don't know. No one. Okay. I don't know. H have I, you? I, 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 I don't know the answer to that question. I'd be, I don't know the answer to that question. Okay. Have you looked on any other city? Because you know the situation that is going on in the city of New York is no different from other also municipalities. Have you looked at any model in other city on how they've been addressing that situation and putting some ideas on? So we have to talked to a few other cities. Um, the, some, there are some other cities that have medallions. We've spoken with Chicago. We've spoken with San Francisco. We spoke with um, even a province in, in Australia uh, that regulated them. My understanding is um, uh, there, were, there have been extreme difficulties in trying to make those systems work. Is there any idea that any of those city have shared with you that you believe that it's something that the city of New York should be look at it, looking at it? Not from what I recall of those ideas, but we're obviously very open to ideas about how to help how to help the industry and how to help drivers. Okay. I, I know Council Member Le Levin has question too, but I just want you know, for everyone, especially those of you guys at TLC, the team also, the, the mayor's office, everyone should understand that, you know, today's hearing is not about a hearing where the council members uh, and the drivers and the medallion owners are here sharing the frustration. I saw that the city on your should know that we want the discussion about the past, present, and the future in New York to have today as a day before and the day after. And we need a solution. You know, this cannot, this is not to be yes, another hearing in the history of the Taxi Limousine Commission. So, I, is, I also know, sir, please, I also know that I have a lot of respect for your work and, and, and know, I know that you've been trying to do the best you can, but this is not about an individual. This is about the cultural 
on how we are operating today. So those of you, those, the members of your team who are here or following this hearing, we will follow up with all the conversation, with all the meetings, we need solution. This situation cannot hold anymore. So if I, if If, if I could just respond, Chair Rodriguez, I, I, I appreciate your comments. I think that over the years, uh, TLC and you, we have achieved we have achieved results for drivers. They may not always have felt like the biggest results, but we've done everything that we can, and we've often done that in partnership with you. And I can cite several examples of legislation that you introduced and that we worked with you on. Um, having said that, yes, um, this, this hearing, I understand, this hearing is certainly not a venting session. The work does not end today by, by any stretch of the imagination. Um, we're very willing to continue the conversation. Um, I hope you know that we are always willing to work with City Council. I know we don't always agree. I know we don't agree on methods. I know that at times um, things can get a little heated, but I think, in fact, um, that when we have worked together, when the administration and the council have worked together in this sphere, we've accomplished um, very strong results, and we've done great things for New York City. I, I agree. I just hope that everyone understands the urgency of this crisis. We can, uh, you know, put ourselves in a situation to be weakness or another individual uh, taking their life away from themselves and the family. Uh, and I also recognize that the, some of the bad actors that we have in this industry, they're real, as we have bad apple everywhere, mm -hmm. including in governments, in the private, academic, all sectors. By saying that, it doesn't mean that everyone that are in the business of the medallion, they are all bad actors. And I also believe that we are, as today we are holding this hearing about, you know, bad actors that they have taken advantage of the immigrant, the dreams of immigrants. We also know that as we've been discussing how to put a cap in the past, how to address a, a, the, the the honor that the city should give by, by allowing the yellow taxi drivers to be the only one that had the right to pick up and drop off. We also know that beside this crisis and, and the devaluation of the medallion, the fact that those drivers, they lost to be the exclusive one. In Midtown, JFK and LaGuardia also is another, have played a negative impact and we will have hold a future conversation as we have in the past, but we are committed, you know, with the co-chair, myself, the speaker, and all of us, to continue playing our role that the Charter of New York City gave us as a council. And that's what I say, any rule that TLC is looking to move ahead, we just want to have a day-by-day -day conversation, because as I say, I was not happy. Yes, for the mayor to make the announcement, and the day before was when I got the copy of that report that for, I will assume, for weeks, TLC already had on the cup. So with that, Councilmember Levin. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, thank you very much for the testimony here. Um, I apologize if, if, uh, if the chairs have already asked this question. Um, it's the, the New York Times article that came out a couple of weeks ago um, spoke about uh, some of the initial purchasers of uh, medallions sometime in the past uh, several years, um, uh, driving up the, the, the initial auction price, um, kind of which has the, the ripple effect of, of uh, or could have had the ripple effect of, of driving the prices ever upward. Um, did TLC notice that uh, at the time, and was was there some concern or ever any, any concern expressed um, at the time that um, particularly some of the larger industry players were purchasing 
uh, medallions at a higher price than we thought they were worth at the time. Can you just, I, let me, give me one second. There, uh, there was awareness and there were investigations. I was just confirming, so I have my mm -hmm. dates right. I believe yeah. it was in two, uh, 2007. Uh, there were investigations into uh, one major industry player, Gene Friedman. Mm -hmm. and those um, were and investigations carried on by, not, that was not just a TLC, I believe that was by the Department of Investigation as well. Okay. All right. And I know he's facing legal action, as are other people in the. In the, in the industry. Um, so you said that, that TLC has not, does not track or has not tracked uh, subsequent mm -hmm. sales of medallions after the initial sale from the city to, uh, to the first purchase. So let me, be, let me be clear, because I apologize if I That's wasn't good. clear. We would always track a subsequent sale. We would track any event that resulted in a transfer of ownership. Uh -huh. But what we don't track uh, is any refinancing of the asset. Okay. And, the, and it's the ref, refinancing is I see. the area. Okay, okay, okay. Now, um, but, in, but it, so you wouldn't track like the initial mortgage. So like, like say for Acris, like this, the Department of Finance, right, we have, it, it does track a, a refinancing, mm -hmm. right? Well, it can, is, it, is there a, anything that prevents us from, from tracking a refinancing? So we do that with mortgages here in New York City, right? I don't, uh, I don't know if there's anything that would prevent us from doing that. I, do, I don't know if there's any limitation on the level of insight we have. I mean, we, we would have to require that as a condition. Do so. we have a right, I mean, I'm just wondering, I mean, this is just a, I mean, are we, is there anything that prevents us from it or do we have a right to it or do we know that, do, have, we, have we wrestled with that legal question of whether we have the authority um, to, to track, to track um, uh, refinancing or any, any liens or or, uh, or or mortgages out on on, a, on that asset? So we would, as I said, we would collect anything that in, involved any kind of change of ownership, even if it was just a you know a, a right. small change by a corporate entity. Um, I don't know the answer to the legal question of whether we are we can collect that information. I agree with what I think is the premise of your question, mm -hmm. which is it would be extremely valuable to the city to have that information. I've, you know, we have discussed, right. we have discussed it again. Uh, it's just a question, it, it, to my mind, it's a question of the extent of our, the city's jurisdiction, its ability to compel. Sure. Refinancing but again, we, operations to provide that I mean, information. You, right, but I mean, you, with, with. Or with, even, with, if, even if we, were, I'm sorry to interrupt, but even right. if we were to require purchasers to provide it, uh, you know, it's a question of whether we would have enough information from the lenders themselves to right. kind of gut check that information. Sure, I'm sorry, can I ask? Uh, um, okay, I mean, obviously, we, I mean, with, with Acris or, and, and subsequently to other sites that are use that available information. I mean, you can really get uh, a wealth of data around mortgages to be able to see a lot of trends and retrospectively understand what has happened um, in the past and, and, and that can help uh, determine um, some actions moving forward. Uh, so in light of that, I was wondering if there's anything, are we, I mean, there's, in my mind, there are um, several ways that we need to be looking at this. First is um, uh, what to do about underwater uh, medallions now, and we can. And, and I'm, I, I'm sure that there are um, uh, different um, different types of, of uh, distressed. Uh, medallions, like, so, so I, I'm, or, or degrees, or you know, ways in which they're distressed, or uh, how they're they're over leveraged, uh, whether they were purchased uh, at too high a value to begin with, whether they are, were um, further leveraged through um, through additional mortgages or refinancing. Um, so I think to. That, that is, I think that that is something that is, we, I agree with the chairs that we need to be um, examining 
how, what to do about that. And I would posit that since the city is inextricably linked to this asset, because we originated the asset, we control the, the, the supply of it, um, it is inherently valuable because of its relationship to the city of, of New York and its and, and, and TLC, um, that we have this responsibility um, to, that we have a responsibility to figure out a way to deal with how, how these are distressed. So I would just posit that as a kind of a starting point. We have to do something because we have a responsibility. We're a party to this. We originated these, these medallions and we kind of knew maybe at the time that things were a little askew or a lot askew or we should have known. I will say that I was a council member. I took office in 2010 with, with council member Rodriguez and, or he took office a little bit before. I remember the budgets when we talked about, and these were, these were tough times because we were looking at cuts in New York City. Right. Uh, we were uh, down revenue. There was, it was after the financial crisis. We were losing, we were, we were making cuts across the board. And the $30 million or so on any fiscal year that was coming in through medallion sales was, was and we, I mean, there's a collective responsibility. I take responsibility as a council member, and I think that we all have a responsibility because we all looked at that as a source of revenue. And that was something that was part of our budget conversation. I mean, when we were getting, when we, when I, I mean, I can't, uh, I, I can't quote chapter and verse, but I recall sitting in rooms either with an OMB director or Mayor Bloomberg himself talking about a budget and taxi medallion sales was part of the conversation as, as, a, as a revenue source. So again, collective responsibility there. Um, have we looked at how we are, how, how we can restructure, work with the lending industry that, ha that has either originated these loans or now holds these mortgages to to write down the principles of underwater mortgages on these medallions, how how do we do that? What's the process? Have we looked at have we looked at uh, what what's been done through the fin at, during the financial crisis, the HARP program, or what have you, um, to to figure out mechanisms by which the city um, can work with 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 the lenders? Because frankly, I think that they would probably want to have a mortgage that that the medallion owner is able to pay and to, to, to stabilize the asset, even if it means taking a loss on the principal or writing down that principal. Is there, I mean, how do we do that? I think that that is, ultimately, I think that that's how we're able to, to deal with this historic, the historical problem that we have here of what's, of, 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 of these underwater mortgages and people that are just over leveraged and working 80 hours a week just to keep up on the interest of these loans. I don't know, what's, what's, I'm assuming we're looking at that. That's gotta be something, and then it's gonna require probably working with our state partners potentially on, on, on uh, regulatory or uh, legislative changes. Sorry, this is a little long-winded. I don't know what the question is exactly, but how, what's, what are we looking at there? Yeah, I think that is the question. And, and yes, I agree with you that that work needs to be done. Some of that work has been done. Some of that has been done through advocacy groups that have gone and, and gone in and presented hardship petitions and have advocated on behalf of owners to try to get the principles reduced, to try to get the monthly payments reduced to try to get off of this concept of an interest-only loan, which, as you know, goes nowhere. Um, that is, the, the loan never goes away if you're just paying the interest. Um, so that work has been done. There, there, we have had meetings with lenders. We have had meetings with the NCUA a while ago. We um, are we hear, and I have heard from owners, and I have, and we have heard from some of the lending institutions that they have, um, certainly they have taken it off their books. They have mm -hmm. taken the value off of their books. Yeah. So they've, in their minds, many of them have realized they're not going to collect on that. Yeah. 
The question is, having done that, have they communicated that to the owners? I'm hearing often the answer is no. Or have they actually changed the actual loan terms to reflect that what is now the reality, which is that the loan that might have been at, at a very high number has been written down to a lower number? Mm -hmm. um, and so what the follow-up on that has to be is you have to then right-size the monthly payments yeah. and extend out the lifetime of the loan and yeah. hopefully get it off of a balloon loan where it's Absolutely. up every right. three years, which that's is the biggest, the, the right. balloon that's loan is the biggest problem. Yep, yep. And that's, and that's where I think that there are reforms that we could probably look to things that happened that uh, whatever Dodd-Frank or, or whatever was done after the financial crisis to, to, to reform lending practices and that's, but I think that that's, so that's definitely stuff that we can actually and work we've committed, through. And you know, we've committed to, with the driver assistance centers, yeah. we've committed to hiring, you know, directly or through an advocacy group, hiring a team of credit advocates to work with owners and to go to the banks and the lenders and to help them yeah. right-size these loans. I think a couple of things that the mayor's, the mayor's office can do, the mayor's office of operations I think could play a very uh, productive role in, in doing some data crunching to, as a whole, look at what the, what would be a, um, a monthly payment that a driver owner could make, and therefore what is, what is the right size of a loan. Now obviously some of these loans are as I said, you know, some of them are overextended in different ways and to different degrees, mm -hmm. but, but like, I think that the mayor's office and TLC and mayor's office operations should probably help to, to, to create it, to look at the data, understand the data a little bit better, to understand what the long term, now that, now that there's a, uh, the FHV cap is, mm -hmm. is in place and we get a better sense of, uh, hopefully this, the, the overall, um, uh, the overall system of for hire vehicles in New York City is stabilized to the extent that we can maybe have a better sense of where things are going to be mm -hmm. in three, five, seven, ten years, so we can understand what a what a what a driver owner can pay can pay off and how and how these loans can make sense. But I think that that could be something that the the city could um, be very helpful with in kind of then establishing and working with the lenders on a, in a large scale, either individually or you know collectively. Um, with distressed um, uh, 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 medallion owners to, um, to figure out what a, a right-sized loan looks like um, in terms of the size of the principal. Um, I, and I just want to acknowledge from the work that I know that NYTWA has done and that Beta V. Desai testified to earlier today, they have, they have been doing, they are the organization that has been doing mm -hmm. um, clinics, finding out this information, approaching the lenders, and I know that they've helped deliver positive results mm -hmm. for some owners, and I know that also, as I'm sure she will be happy to tell you, they have thought a lot about what those monthly payment amounts should be. Okay. Um, but I agree with and you that that, could, that that type of conversation would benefit from data analysis as well. Um, and then last question is, have we looked at the concept of the, because because if, if the city's going to buy out distressed mortgages, that gets really expensive really quickly. And there's probably more distressed mortgages on medallions than we can afford to buy in any given time frame. So have we looked at potentially putting the city's collateral to guarantee a refinanced loan that is right-sized? I mean, that's a, it's a concept, I think, that has legal implications and state law and state constitution. but as a concept, as a, in, as a way to provide a ba the backstop, mm -hmm. something of, of that is consequential, um, while at the same time not just wholesale buy buying out more, uh, mortgages or medallions that, are, that w we wouldn't be able to afford to do for as big a, a, a larger number as, as I think is necessary, but still has the city on the hook in some sense, but hopefully not ever having to pay because if it's a right size mortgage, they won't go into default. The city doesn't have to uh, come forward with uh, that guarantee. Well, this is one of, I was asked 
earlier by uh, Chair Rodriguez if I was aware of other jurisdictions that have attempted some form of financial assistance, and, and that is very similar to what I believe San Francisco did with its medallion market. Mm -hmm. I think it was not, I'm, I'm afraid, I don't think it was designed properly, and the result is that there's one credit union that held all the loans that thought the city had put up collateral or had guaranteed a certain amount that is now suing the city. Um, so I'm okay. sure there are lessons to be learned from that example. Sure, okay. But I, it's a concept that I've been interested in for mm -hmm. a while as a way to try to stabilize everything um, in a way that's, that could, we could do it at a, a large enough scale instead of just putting cash out to mm -hmm. purchase, to purchase medallions. So thank you. I, I appreciate all these answers. I'm, we're gonna, there's a lot to be done here. I agree. Um, I, I, I know you do and I hope you do. Uh, understand the level of um, desperation that people have because um, you know their hopes and dreams are have, were poured into and all of their savings and everything else that they have was poured into something of value that the city had a role in um, and then the bucket the bottom of the bucket fell out and we have a collective responsibility to get these owners on their feet in a way that is sustainable so that they can um, support their families, send their kids to college, uh, all the things that make up the American dream. So. I, do, I do understand it and I can assure you that again, as I said, everyone at TLC, we interact with drivers and owners on a regular basis, many daily. We're very aware of the pain and the problem and the crisis. We take it very seriously and we work, we're, we work as hard as we can to do what we can. I think we've made great progress. There's obviously much more work that can be done. Thanks. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Chairs. Uh, Commissioner, I, uh, I want to go back to the February 2014 auction which resulted mm -hmm. in 40 percent of the participants experiencing bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. Uh, the decision to conduct an auction, the decision to set the upset price, is that a decision that TLC makes on its own or in consultation? Who makes that decision? Who are all the players in that decision-making process? I haven't uh, worked there when there's been an auction, so I have, would have to imagine that that's made in consultation with, um, you know, that, that that would be made in consultation with other offices. I'd, I'd be surprised. Does OMB play a role? OMB is the institution responsible for the budget, so I would be I would be surprised if they didn't. Okay. Who was the head of OMB at the time of the February 2014 auction? I don't know. That was a period I didn't work for the city. I don't I don't remember. Okay. It was. Does your assistant Does the general counsel know the answer to that question? I mean, I can look it up. Yeah, I, I can look it up. I don't know offhand. You have no idea who was. I d I, you, you want me to give you a you guess? He was, he's the first deputy mayor. Okay. So I'll answer the question for you. Thank you. Can we pull up the Nakua exhibits? The quote? So as Nakua points out, a medallion has essentially two values. Right? There's the value based on the market, which can be the product of speculation, and then there's the value based on the actual ability of the medallion to generate net operating income, right? And there's something of a paradox here. It's possible for a medallion owner to have a million dollar asset on paper, but virtually no net operating income in the real world. A higher medallion value likely meant higher loan payments, which in turn likely meant less income for the driver. TLC knew or should have known the terms of each loan, TLC knew the operating expenses of running a taxi. And so from the loan terms and the operating expenses, TLC should have been able to project the level at which a medallion would no longer generate a sufficient net operating income, a net operating income that you can live on. Did TLC even attempt to make those projections during the bubble? I'm not aware. Oh. Again, I wasn't, I wasn't there during that time. I know that's an unsatisfactory, that may be an unsatisfactory response, yeah. but I, I, was, I don't know what deliberations went into the auctions. I know that the auctions were set in 20, as I said, they were set in 2013. 
I know that. So I'll, I'll ask it. Social yeah. policy. I'll ask it normatively. Increase the number of wheelchair accessible. Sh sh should TLC project the point at which the medallion values are so high, the monthly loan payments are so prohibitive that it leaves a driver with virtually no or minimal net operating income? Is that the sort of projection that TLC should make before approving a medallion transaction? as part of your statutory responsibility for financial stability. Which again, as I said, is the subject of litigation right now, what, what, the, what that exact responsibility is. It's also the, the subject is. of your rules, financial stability, but, and it's but is that the of kind of projection. That's why it's the subject of litigation. Is that the kind of projection that TLC should make before approving a transaction? That traditionally, as you know, what we have looked at is whether the purchaser, whether the potential purchaser could provide uh, documentation of sufficient funding to uh, to enter into the loan, so that would have been a commitment letter. We didn't receive the loan application papers. We're not. We were not in the role of loan examiners or credit examiners. But you had the authority to request the loan. You had the authority to examine the loan terms as a condition for granting the medallion or the license, and from the loan terms and from the operating expenses, you could have determined whether the driver would have been able to generate a living income. That's, I, I wanna go to the Roth report. Can we go to page two of the Roth report? Uh, not that, no. The individual owner operator section. Exhibit 30. So according to Mr. Roth's analysis, a TLC employee, uh, a driver can generate $100,000 in fares and tips every year in revenue. Uh, if you have a loan with a four point, let's just say half a million dollar mortgage with a 4.5% interest rate over 15 years, that cost about $51,000 every year, plus $40,000 in operating expenses. That's $91,000 in total operating expenses, leaving the driver with $9,000 in net operating income. Right. Those were the kind of transactions that TLC approved. Do you think $9,000 is a living income? Again, I'm. I'm not familiar with the analysis that was done here. This, I know the New York Times has called this. No, report, we'll, 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 a, we'll provide you with more analyses, but, a, but do you think $9,000 is a document living? that was produced by no, I, an employee? I, I get it. So no one, no one in TLC has ever seen the, the Roth report. You've made that clear. But um, is $9,000 a living income? No, of course not. Of course not. Okay. Do you think TLC should be approving transactions that leave a driver with $9,000 in net operating income? I, the TL, as I said, this is not information that TLC had in front of it when it approved transactions. Yeah. But you had the we ability to request that information as a condition for receiving the medallion. I... Yes, Perhaps did. we did, yeah. I don't know as a point of law, you, you, but probably You certainly did. did. Can we go to the... What exhibit is this? Exhibit 2122. So in addition to the Roth report, mm -hmm. TLC did its own cost and revenue analysis mm -hmm. in 2004. So the presentation contains a cost and revenue analysis for owner drivers assuming a net income for drivers of $50,000 a year. The annual cost of the loan is 18,000 a year. The gross revenue, about 90,000. The operating expenses, 41,000. The net income, 49,000. Can we go to the next page? So using the same assumptions in the 2004 analysis, the same assumptions about loan terms and operating expenses, TLC could have projected the impact of higher medallion loan amounts on net operating income, right? If, if, if a loan amount at $250,000 leaves a driver with, with $49,000 in net annual income, mm -hmm. 
a loan amount at a million dollars would leave a driver with a net operating loss of over $4,000. Do you think, and I know you said you were not there at the time, this is a TLC analysis, do you think it's responsible for TLC to approve transactions with loan amounts that leave drivers with a net operating loss of $4,000? Is that sort of thing responsible as a policy matter in the abstract? You show me the advertising and sales pitches yeah. from, from prior years, and I think I've, I have tried to make clear, and I think I've, I've made clear that obviously TLC is not in the business right now of being involved in medallion auctions. Um, the type of language that was used and the techniques that were used were not something that I personally would have done. In terms of um, whether we, whether TLC could have created this calculator, I, I, yes, I think TLC could have created that calculator. Is that something that TLC is going to do going forward? Are you going to determine the net operating income that a driver earns before approving a medallion? I think that we have, uh, we have changes in place that we've announced. There's changes that are a part of the legislation that you and your colleagues have introduced, and I think, you know, we're not, I guess, talking about that legislation today, but I would hope that we can have a conversation about what types of things we could increase. When you put it that way, it sounds like a good thing to include. Can we go to Exhibit 20? So in, in addition to regulating the financial stability of the medallion market writ large, TLC had an obligation to regulate the financial stability at the level of individual licensees. And I call your attention to Exhibit 20, which I call the in incredibly shrinking financial disclosure. Uh, TLC went from demanding 21 pages of financial disclosure in the 1990s to four pages of financial disclosure in the 2000s to zero pages of financial disclosure in the 2010s. Uh, why, why did TLC over time demand less and less financial disclosure from its licensees? I, again, this is not something I've seen uh, before, so I understand your question. I don't know, I don't know where this, uh, I don't know how you're coming up with this calculation. Sure. So well, I'll, I'll ask, I'll ask sure a more general question. Accurate. Did TLC request less financial information and disclosure over time? I'm gonna, I don't know the answer to that. You don't know the answer to that, okay. Uh, do you review the financial files of your licensees? Do I personally? Your agency, you, you're, you're here as a representative of TLC, not you personally. Okay, um, so my understanding is that what's, what's reviewed is we receive uh, different parts of information about our licensees, including criminal background checks, including other uh, personal information. And as I said, for a medallion, we require a, something in the form of a commitment letter from a lender demonstrating uh, that there is in fact a loan that would secure the purchase of the asset. Okay. Is there additional? And who, who is responsible for reviewing those documents in your agency? Which staffers, which unit? Uh, we have a team of people who, who work on it. And are these people lawyers? What, what's their position? I can, uh, I mean, I can provide you with that information. If you, if you don't, I, if you don't have, if you don't have that information, I can provide you with it. I don't know, I don't know. Do you know who leads the unit that's responsible for reviewing the financial files? I think I do, but I'm not sure, so I'd rather not speculate. I'd rather not say someone's I, I, name out loud in a hearing like this if, I, if I'm not sure, but I'll commit to providing you that information. Okay. Um, do you know if those, okay, we'll, 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 I'll ask for more information. I wanna ask about, because um, we've spoken about financial stability, we've spoken about advertising, we've spoken about the auctions. I, I wanna ask you about the, bad actors in the industry. Uh, when, when did the city revoke the license of Gene Friedman? We directed him to divest his medallions when he pled guilty to a federal crime. And so when was that? 
sometime last year. Last year, okay. So it was a recent, but the but TLC is known for a long time that Gene Friedman was a bad actor in the industry. He was one of the subjects of a DOI report in 2007. He was the subject of the Roth report in 2010. In 2012 and in 2015, he boasted about manipulating the market and engaging in speculation. DOI said that he was one of the driving forces behind collusion in the market. Uh, in 2013, he had a settlement with the AG for overcharging drivers of taxi cabs. Uh, he was later found to have evaded taxes. Uh, why did it take all these complaints about him, all these findings about him date as far back as 2007, the DOI report, if not before then, why did it take so long to revoke his license? I know that there was extensive litigation with Mr. Friedman, and that may have had an impact. Why would that prevent you from, I, I mean, TLC has the authority to revoke a license based on good moral character. You have the authority to revoke a license based on fitness to hold a, a license. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if, if I'm, I'll just frame it in the abstract. If, if I'm a bad actor in the industry who's stealing wages from my workers, who's engaging in collusion and manipulating the market, who's evading taxes, do you think that I am fit to hold a license within the meaning of TLC's rules? In the abstract, I don't want that person or you, if you are that person, to hold a TLC license. So you but would, vo you would the, revoke my license? I, revocation is serious, and you look at yeah. several it's, factors. So it's wage right? theft. So you're talking about in the, so is overcharging about, drivers. That's pretty serious. Collusion in, in the, the market abstract. is pretty serious. You know, if, if one of these individual drivers make a mistake, TLC will aggressively crack down on them. But when corporate owners like Gene Friedman are admittedly are admitting to speculating in the market, there seems to be no accountability. There's, there's enforcement against the underdog, but not enforcement against speculators like Michael Cohen or Gene Friedman. So again, is that, if I engaged in wage theft, if I engaged in collusion, would you revoke my license? When these people were convicted of crimes, of those, that, of, of those crimes, their licenses were revoked. So your opinion, so your opinion My that, opinion so, is so that a DOI, there's a, a, a DOI licensees finding. Licensees are entitled to process. No, I understand, well, there's this criminal process and then there's administrative process. So if there's a DOI finding of collusion, that in your mind is not sufficient grounds for revocation? That's not what I said. I'm, I'm asking not, you I'm that question. I'm not aware, uh, sorry? You said that conviction is grounds for revocation, right? What about conviction a DOI finding of collusion? Revocation. I don't know that there, I'm sorry, I'm just not familiar with the DOI. I know that there was a DOI. What about the settlement with the Attorney General's office in 2013? I'm not sure what, I'm not sure if that settlement resulted in a conviction, but. Yeah, it didn't result in a conviction and it did result in restitution. I want to, Just want to walk through. Can we go to Exhibit Nine? So I, so I think Commissioner, you and I have a disagreement. I am. It's my position that TLC had a central role in creating the speculative bubble that led to the mass forced closures and bankruptcies. The TLC was in a position to prevent the bubble and in many ways helped create the bubble. And so, and so there were several warning signs that were ignored by TLC. Uh, in 1987 then, TLC Commissioner Gerben, Gorman Gilbert said the following to the New York Times, what we've created here is the currency in the medallion themselves. We've diverted the attention of the industry from serving the public to being concerned about the value of that commodity. So there was awareness, TLC awareness of speculation in the medallion market dating as far back as 1987. Uh, exhibit 10, the second warning. In 1990, TLC 
in partnership with several city agencies, began to investigate, quote, complaints that taxi medallion brokers and lenders were selling the medallions at prices far above the prevailing market rate to unsuspecting buyers. Quote, in one case cited by the commission, a buyer paid $138,000 for a medallion in August, while the market price was about $125,000. So in 1990, a $13,000 price differential was enough to spark an investigation from TLC. I thought, as, as I said, the mayor ordered a 45-day review into the role of brokers. Sure. We've, we've, we've started well, l a Long after the we've collapse also agreed of the medallion to set market. We've the, the business yeah. practices accountability yeah. unit. We've agreed to set up uh, several offices to look internally at what TLC does and is doing and how we can strengthen our processes. And we've agreed to set up services, some of them as a result of legislation from city council, to, to um, offer more assistance, including financial credit counseling to the drivers and to the yes. owners. Se several years so, after the collapse of the medallion market. But 1990 demonstrates. I think we're here to talk about what we can do going forward. We're that actually here to learn from history and explore the origins of the crisis and talk about how we go forward. Uh, exhibit 13, as you know, as I referenced earlier, there was a DOI report finding collusion and speculation in the medallion market. Which is not a criminal conviction, which is referred, which was then, there was a criminal referral then that was made, is my understanding. Sure. But DOI in, warned TLC of collusion and manipulation in the medallion market. Uh, exhibit 14. In 2010, former Commissioner Matthew Douse, speaking before the International Association of Transportation Regulators, cited the willingness of banks to offer loans without a down payment, not as cause for concern, but as cause for celebration and cheerleading. Quote, we raised over $200 million for the city of New York, and some of these folks are offering 0% down. You tell me what bank walks around asking for a 0% down on a loan. It's just really amazing, and it's a testament to the strength of the medallion. Exhibit 15, of course, is the Roth report. Exhibit 16, both That's in 2012 and in 2015. An That's let me, let me reference in the New York Times. I'm sorry? Sure. Well, 2010, the Roth report came out. In 2012 and in 2015, Gene Friedman was publicly boasting about rigging the medallion market. Quote, I'd go to an auction, I'd run up the price of a medallion, then I'd run to my bankers and say, look how high the medallions are priced, let me borrow against my portfolio, and they let me do that. Exhibit 18, when asked about Mr. Friedman's public boasting about speculation, Mr. Dow said, well, we were aware that they were bidding up the prices. Yes, I mean, the goal was to try to get the highest price. So not only was TLC aware of speculation by the likes of Gene Friedman, but according to Mr. Dallas, your predecessor, he saw speculation as a good thing, as the goal of the agency, as a metric of success. And then, of course, Exhibit 19 is the public letter from NACUR, the, national, the federal regulator, warning about speculation in the medallion market. So there was warning after warning after warning about the risk or the reality of speculation in the medallion market. And I'll, I'll end with this point. It, it seems to me TLC failed to regulate the financial stability of the medallion market. Your agency failed to enforce the law against bad actors like Gene Friedman, who was engaged in collusion, tax evasion, and wage theft. Your agency failed to heed all these warnings, both from within the agency and beyond, about market manipulation. Your agency knowingly sold medallions to unsuspecting buyers at inflated values. Your agency engaged in false advertising to immigrants, selling them a false promise of the American dream. Your agency approved transactions with predatory loans that cannibalized the incomes of drivers. So I want to return to one of my very first questions. Given these facts, given this hearing, are you finally willing to come to grips with TLC's culpability for the medallion crisis and the human cost that it has inflicted on, on drivers. 
Are you, feel, are you willing to acknowledge some level of moral responsibility I'm, on the part of your agency and on the part of the city of New York? I'm absolutely willing to acknowledge the pain that people are suffering. I'm sorry. Are you for responsible that for that pain in any way? I, I, I've described TLC's role in this. I haven't said that TLC doesn't have a role in this. I have not process. heard an acknowledgement what I have of responsibility. Said, what I have said is the responsibility for regulating this industry goes far beyond TLC. It goes to city council, it goes to the Department of Financial Services, yeah. and it goes to the federal government. Who, who decides whether someone receives a medallion? Is it the city council or is it you as a commissioner of we, TLC? We, we, uh, we approve the transfer yeah. of a medallion. So, so we yeah. pass the laws and, and you implement the laws. And what I have said yeah. many times today and what I will continue to say is if you look at the steps that this administration yeah. has taken to provide relief to drivers in this market and to cap the number of four hire vehicle licenses, to spread the responsibilities of providing services so they don't just fall on yellow, I think you will see that this administration has done a tremendous amount for the yellow industry. And I think that work obviously continues. We've just recently announced, as I said, we're waiving um, collection of medallion fees. We're working with you to make that a permanent, uh, to make that permanent under Councilman Levine's legislation. Okay. We've expressed, uh, again, we haven't talked about the testimony today. If you've seen my written testimony, we've expressed uh, willingness to work with you, which I mean on additional steps that we can take to help. But, but admission is the first step toward recovery. And it, and it seems, you know, throughout the hearing, there, there are people who are suffering. There are people who might die working, who will never have a retirement because they have been reduced to the status of indentured servants who have seen all of their income cannibalized by predatory loans, right? And so the tone of self-congratulation uh, is out of touch with the plight I don't think of drivers of and the reality of the medallion collapse. From this side, but if you want me to, I absolutely accept responsibility for anything I did that contributed to this crisis or that deepened this crisis. Absolutely. There's no, there's no question I would accept that. And are you, are you willing to apologize to the drivers here? I, yes. I, yes. I'm apologize sorry. to them. Are you willing to apologize to the drivers? I'm, as I said. They're right here. You can apologize to them. Just Chair, I think you're turning this into something different from what it should be. I was turning to them to talk to them, but I don't need to be told to you what to do or when to do it. If you, you, you're okay. under no obligation to apologize, are you willing to apologize to them? I've answered this question several times, and each time you've sure. cut me off. So I've said okay. yes. I am. Uh, no, no, no. I've said yes. I right. accept responsibility for right. what TLC has done, to, for what I have done, to um, make this crisis worse. I have tried to explain today my belief, and I know you don't want to hear it, but that other people are also responsible, that the main cause of this is the lending practices of the banks and the credit unions, as you have detailed. Yes. Commissioner, I thank you for your time. Thank you, Chair. Commissioner, this is what I you know, someone wrote something to Twitter. I feel that express also how we feel. Mm -hmm. That person said, if corporations were dealt such a blow, they would have been compensated immediately. Here, the suffering is ignored. This is a moral orange. We need to fix it now. You heard from the drivers and, and those are having advocated for the right, independent medallions owner, that one of the reasons why we as a city because this is not just only about TLC, it involved many, even though the agency is the one responsible, leading, you know, the supervision of those that we believe were, had been back actors by 
also the lack of leadership also that we have seen in TLC for now, and again, I'm not thinking about yes, you as the current leaders of TLC, is the agency, per se, previous. A, it could be current individual still being involved, you know, to fail to make individuals accountable, those a, that, as I said, were those back actors. So I, I believe, I hope that as the mayor is going nationwide, that he is stepping in and help us at this moment. I think that what we learned from the real estate crisis was that the small one was the one affected. Banks will pay back. What we know is that a lot of people took advantage of the real estate crisis, or the housing crisis. And I think that this is a, a important moment. I know that we've been trying to address this crisis, but I hope again that you, in the role that you're playing right now, City Hall, and of course, I would like to see the mayor stepping in and putting together a plan on how we will give the dignity back this is, I love programs, I love counseling, but this is about money. This is about mortgage. This is about individual that they use, that they use the value of the medallion to send their kids to college. Those who are sitting here, that they use the value to buy the house. So this is about, I would like to see a plan, I would like to see number. I, we will work together with counseling, but this is about, are we ready to put the numbers on the table and be able to say, as the federal government did it to the real estate, when the housing crisis, the real estate crisis, now the city of New York should put our own plan to rescue. And, and, and of course, as I said, Today we're focusing on the value of the medallions. But this is about Uber and Lyft too. This is about, this is also about enforcement. This is about where are we displaying the TLC officer to do enforce. I would say 100% of them, they should be yes here in Midtown, JFK and, and LaGuardia. I think that this, I believe that even, at the mo even in the middle of the crisis where we are today, if we as a city will be honoring the exclusive rights of a yellow taxi being the one that, the only one that do pick up and drop out in the Milton area, in the James <laughs> and LaGuardia. That situation, we will be having this situation different going after the bad actors, but at the same time knowing that the driver, they will be able to make the living as they work 60 hours a week to support themselves. So, so I hope again that we will continue working together, but this is a moment to, you know, step in and understand that this, we cannot come back, you know, they're here in two months from now, and yes, putting a Band-Aid. You know, this is not a crisis that will be cured with a Band-Aid. This requires... And, 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 and my last thing is, I hope that no one, first of all, if, if there's anyone at TLC that plays some role that turned the back to this situation, I hope that those people will step out. I hope that Anyone that is, has some level of responsibility would not come back to the agency in any role. If by any chance they were witness, they decided not to 
make those brokers accountable. And I hope again that this is gonna be a moment where those of you guys that, you know, been doing your job, you know, having the interests of the drivers and the individual owners at the top priority, you know, 100% to continue working together. But if there's anyone still in the agency that plays some role today, or if they have played a role in the past, I hope that none of those individuals will come back to play a role or any leadership level at TLC. This is a big crisis that we are facing. We need solution, but anyone that has been involved, associated with this, should step out immediately. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Share with this by one of the medallion owners, Bernardo Celerino, which is something mm -hmm. I can share with you. Please. That is a you owe three hundred fifty-six dollars, it, it, of additional tax cap and held vehicle tax interest and penalty, and then it say information received from the New York City Tax and Limousine Commission indicate you have additional uh, taxable trips. Then close the schedule, reflect the details of the proposed or adjustment. Is this something that a... I'll certainly look into it if you can provide it to me. If you can give me that or we can try to make a copy here today. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Chair Rodriguez. Chair Torres, so thank you. That, now we go into the next panel. Jana Shaw. And we put in the clock in, sorry. Can we quickly yeah. okay. Sorry, Commissioner. Sorry, I have a, a statement from one of the sponsors of, of our legislation, a legislative package, Council Member Adrian Adams. She, she writes, it reads, Dear Chairs Torres and Rodriguez, thank you for this important hearing today. I represent District 28 in Southeastern Queens, a working and middle class community where a substantial number of taxi drivers reside. For many drivers in my district, medallions were the ticket to the American dream. When the taxi medallion burst in 2014, my constituents were left with the short end of the stick. They worked hard to scrape together every penny and took our loans to purchase a million dollar asset they believed would bring them some financial stability. Instead, they were duped into partaking in predatory loans. There was a lack of financial transparency in the taxi industry and my bill. Intro 1584 seeks to change that by requiring all medallion buyers to submit an annual financial statement to prevent hardworking drivers from being preyed upon and taken advantage of. Some may argue that revenue for medallions was projected to increase as the years went on, but even if the revenues were to steadily increase, it still wouldn't justify a million dollar price tag and would not be enough for drivers to pay off their loans with such predatory terms. The crash eventually led to more than 950 medallion owners to file for bankruptcy. It's fairly easy to see parallels between the medallion bubble and the real estate mortgage bubble. Prices of these assets were bound to crash and the bubble was bound to pop. There are many entities that bear responsibility. Lenders kept on giving out money with very little regard to the borrower's ability to pay back. TLC was not effectively monitoring or regulating the medallion sales. And leaders within the taxi industry were pushing an asset which was clearly overvalued. We must do better by hardworking New York City taxi drivers. Intro 1584 will certainly help to do just that. Respectfully submitted, Councilmember Adrian Adams. Thank you, Chair. So we're going to be continue calling Nicola Hent, Elizabeth Hent, Alice Brown, Bernardo Celerino, Tamar, Tamara Bisniakova, Jana Shaw. We put in the clock in two minutes, please, because of the numbers of other... How many minutes? Two minutes. So what I say that we are now passing the two minutes. Please, if you, if you take more than that, summarize. <clears throat> two minutes. Anyone can begin, so we can start there in the left, and then we can go into the right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman Rodriguez. 
Thank you, Mr. Councilman Torres. I really appreciate you for what you did today and probably you'll do in the future, but I, uh, I will say, please be careful. I don't want to happen to, to you what happened to Mr. R uh, Ruben Diaz. Uh, your colleagues, Speaker of the uh, City Council, Mayor G uh, Como, will be ready to eliminate you. Uh, I should start with this. Thanks to the New York Times for one year long investigation and cost them a lot of money. Personally, I shot for the movie at least three times with them. I took them to JFK to expose the robbery, what have been done to us. One year investigation was not cheap. Now, I have here a papers from Cranes from 2015. It says here, Cuomo jumps into Uber debate, urge council to delay vote and ma on mayor's plan. Is anybody here from the state? No. They have a big criminal hands on this robbery, what has been done to us. Further down, we have a chance to correct this, but it's not going to be easy. You sold me in uh, uh, 1990 the medallion with the exclusive rights to hail in New York City. The law was in the book 52-0484. You took my exclusive rights and gave it to others for free, not only robbing me, but robbing the city of the income revenue. They don't care about the city, they care about their pocket. Uh, I'm Elisabetta Hent, and I wanted to give my time to Nikolai Hent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Elisabetta. Where do you go from here? You or either give me my exclusive rights back, and I'll continue to work and do the job what I did for, uh, for more than 21 years, or if you want to buy my exclusive rights back as a city, you can do that but not a penny low than 945,000 what was the last sailing of the medallion in 2000 auction, 2014 auction. <laughs> not a penny less, only up. If you wanna do something soon and early, you can do it tomorrow. In La Guardia and JFK, especially terminal, uh, uh, the JetBlue, Terminal 5. It's true, La Guardia has construction, but not only, only for yellow, not for Uber and Lyft. We used to have seven places where we pick up in La Guardia. All those places are out from us and in our Uber and Lyft. Who controls the Port Authority, the La Guardia Airport? Governor Como, evil eyes Como. Tomorrow, you can do that if you want it, because it's a city land, not a Como's land. And, te and JFK Terminal 5, why we are out one mile from the terminal and in our Uber lift and all the hustlers do what Terminal 7 did, Terminal 1, Terminal 8, Terminal 4. Uh, other problems what we have, I don't know how much I'm going to work one, two more, three years. But thanks God I'm still able to work. But uh, uh, whatever plan will do to co correct this, it has to be with my retirement too. Not, not, I'm not going to give up. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, council members. I, know underst I understand we have only two minutes. It used to be three. TLC, council Torres. TLC do not have the guts to admit their culpability. We demand a mea culpa from TLC even in the next meeting, okay? I also want to say that uh, we also request council members or somebody, some authority to contact NCUA, National Credit Unions Administration, because I personally did. I went to civil court and I lost my case because the judge in civil court found that to go up from 4% interest rate to six and a quarter interest rate is not overcharged. 
but I'm positive sure if I charge that judge $62.50 for a $40 ride, TLC is going to send me a ticket for overcharge. Okay? So basically, I want to say that um, I have contacted also NCUA and Midland Fund Services. They are responsible for more than 3,000 loans from former Melrose Credit Union. Mel, uh, Midland is blaming NCUA. NCUA is blaming Midland, Midland, so there's no way to appeal any case. The time is expired already. The yellow cap industry do not ask for welfare help. We don't need welfare. We need your help. And your help means to investigate as much as you guys can to find out what can we do. And if eventually we can be compensated for all these damages, I'm 63 already. I'm also close to retire. I'm expecting to have my, my own 401k. I'm not going to have it. In fact, it's very difficult even to find drivers today because there are no more drivers. And I just learned about the new fashion from Uber and Apple and Lyft owners that they are leasing half of the shift. So they are allowed to rent to get money from, uh, to get our passengers, okay, or our ex-passengers in their own benefit. And the TLC is overlooking to that, and Uber and Lyft also don't do any, doesn't do anything. Maybe you can do something, guys. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Um, we come here today together to look for uh, justice. And I uh, thank you, Mr. Rodriguez, Mr. Torres. I'm impressed with all the expression what you approach to Tax Limousine Commission. Um, the commissioner was not prepared. He didn't do his homework. He came very unprepared for everything what we present tonight, to, today here. Um, I'm an owner of a Yellow Cab. I bought the, the, it was a transfer in 2012. So in this time, um, the commissioner says he's, he doesn't have clue about, uh, uh, he's not involved about when they do the transfer. When you do the transfer, TLC is charging you. They cost me $10,000 to do this. My husband died, so we have to do this from his 100% on to 100% to his wife. So in this case, I own. What I own? I want four tires. I'm a owner. What I own? I want nothing. I'm, four, I'm 64 years old. And um, in August, I have to change the car or do the bankruptcy. I have, I bought the, the transfer was 560,000. For seven years I pay and I'm in the same boat because uh, Meros Credit Union um, is out, Midland is playing game with us. So what we can do now, um, I'm, I'm the next one to do suicide because in August I have, I have two choices, buy the car or do bankruptcy. So how old I am? I'm 64. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be retired in two years. So I understand all the owners who come today together to look for, for uh, something to be done. Can this can be done today? Can we start all this today? Because the commission, tax limousine commission, they put their hands up and they said the city is everything. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, May, Miss, can you say your name, please, for record? Uh, Jana Stro. Okay. Thank you. Hello, I am Tamara Vishnyakova, and I'm taxi fleet owner. Um, I'm a taxi medallion owner that have been, my medallion have been com paid off completely. And however, I am still in a big problem. And some of our taxi owners are 80 plus years old and have sadly lost our life savings because we invested in the city's yellow cap franchise, which is now worth nothing. We had time when drivers, owners, and the city of New York were making money. Right now, everything is zero. My investment is zero, and uh, monthly income is 3.5 times less. Um, I want to remind you what is written on the top of our heads. A government of the people, by the people, for the people. And we are the people. We are the people that last five years were begging TLC for help. 
We were begging and knocking each door. We had hearings, meetings, emails, and what we got? All we got, just mental hotline. I am not crazy. How mental hotline on the phone can help me to bring back all my investment? I'm not crazy. I am not was begging for mental hotline. So we are begging to bring our industry up. We are begging to put the cap on Uber and Lyft. We are begging to exempt taxes from 250 surcharge. How we can compete with Uber uh, when our customers sit down and see right away on the daytime 350 on the meter and at night even more. Sometimes they just leave our taxis, our poor beaten and bleeding taxi that were left on the side on the curb bleeding and by, beaten with those wolf Uber cars. Thank, Thank you, Miss. Hello, my name is Elise Brule, and to tell you a little bit about myself, I worked in my taxi practically every day for 25 years, and at times I would wonder when I could take a day off. My daughter at the time was a little girl, and she would sit in front of, she would sit in front with me because at times I didn't have a babysitter. She would sometimes fall asleep, this little kid. But nothing stopped me from believing that one day my taxis, as I'm giving, it, giving to it, it would give back to me. And so now I come to this. What happened to the taxi industry was a faux pas. What happened to the industry was not at a time of financial despair in New York City. It was at a time of great prosperity. It was when greed outweighed everything conceivable. New York City did not care about those men and women who believed desperately in the system. It only cared, and still does, about the new kid in town, Uber and how much money it could derive from it. You, it became insatiable with greed. Uh, okay. Have you decided what you want from us and how we can survive? You must keep the cap and have a committee to unwind the damage that has been done don't throw away the vestiges that you already created, because one day it may be too late. Thank you. The next witnesses are David Byer of the Committee for Taxi Safety, Pat Russo, Daniel Ackman, Taxi Medallion Buyer, Galena, taxi medallion owner. Ganesh from Elmhurst. And Suvez from Elmhurst. Uh, I apologize in advance if I'm mispronouncing anyone's name. And is Vito Lanza from the New York City Taxi Alliance. Vito. Uh, Emmanuel Soffel, uh, Carolyn Prots, okay. Good morning, Chairman, including those who are cell phoning and council member. 
My name is Carolyn Prats. I'm a medallion owner, and I'll be addressing TLC's role in the debacle. There's a lot that hasn't been covered today. The problem has always been the excessive number of cars on the road. In 2011, there were 50,000 for hire vehicles, including taxis. There's now 135,000. And the problem continues to get worse. Even after the cap that you passed last summer, there's 6,000 more cars on the road now than there were last summer. It's not complicated math. As I've already explained to the Council in the past, the crux of the problem lies with the TLC, their lack of enforcement of existing rules, a list of which is attached to my testimony. The strategy of the TLC is to express sympathy, throw us a few crumbs so that they'll have talking points, and then continue their apparent policy of dismantling the medallion system. The 2016 congestion study, according to the 4,000-page dossier that I acquired through someone who did a FOIL, was much more than a study about congestion. According to the many documents and emails, it was to be a road map for the future of the entire industry. The documents are heavily redacted. The conclusions and policies remain secret. Judging by what has ensued between January 16 and now, I think we can surmise what they were and are. Chair Torres wondered if the TLC had become more of a spectator than a regulator. But it's worse than that. The facts paint an ugly picture of collusion by regulators who have become, in essence, the compliance department of a multinational corporate predator. The TLC became the enabler of the destruction of the franchise, the taxi medallion system, that was created by the city, sold at a price determined by the city, at the many auctions that were held by the city, all the while laying out the red carpet for that predator, and at the same time continually professing that it had no authority to control the situation. As previous Commissioner Zoshi said, quote, the TLC watched. They watched while they created a vast pool of slaves with no path to the middle class. If you, if you can summarize, we just have so many. The idea of an office of financial stability that should reside within the TLC makes about as much sense as inviting Shola Olataya back to New York City. You remember who I'm talking about. I know. To supervise lead remediation of NYCHA buildings. It would be far better to have an independent body, perhaps the still yet to be formed medallion task force, overseeing the TLC. Thank you. I, I just want to quickly correct it. The, the legislation calls for DOI to be part of that, invest, that investigative partnership. So DOI is independent, is, has the kind of independence that you're looking for. Right, but the information will only be good as, as good as what oh. they get from TLC, yeah. and I don't believe anything that you're going to get from yeah. TLC. I, I'm going to keep uh, Mr. Chairman, I appreciate it. My name is Pat Russo. I'm going to concede yeah. my time okay. to Ms. Pat's oh, thank, thank you, Pat. You. Okay. Um, under the rules that they will be considering, and by they I mean TLC in July, guided by the DOT TLC congestion study that was released last week, the excess cars and the 62% increase in greenhouse gases won't be removed from the roads. They and their emissions will be offloaded to the boroughs, including your borough, the Bronx, which is already number 62, I think, out of 62 counties in New York State in terms of health. So get ready, Bronx. Uh, instead, the continua instead of the continuation of pretend and extend policies by TLC, I would suggest a number of things. Firstly, the TLC's role in the medallion debacle should be investigated point by point. There should be a thorough house cleaning, including major personnel changes. Their mission statement, and this is the most important part that nobody has talked about, must be made crystal clear to them when you leave it to them to decide what their policies are going to be, they just leave it at consumer choice and safety, driver welfare, and accessibility. That doesn't go far enough. They're responsible for the stability of the entire industry, including the yellow taxi medallion franchise. The remediation measures that they're proposing to paper over their past negligence and malfeasance will provide them with talking points, all the while pushing more medallion owners under the poverty line. Lastly, I'd like to point out that it is in New York City's interest to protect the franchise, the taxi medallion. You already threw away $2 billion in medallions that you can't sell. I'm sure the city budget would be in much better shape with those $2 billion, and those were for wheelchair-accessible medallions. 
If the city were to reinstill confidence in the medallions, it would be to everyone's benefit, particularly the taxpayer, since we're thinking about bailouts. That, that cannot be accomplished by a TLC left to its own devices. It cannot be accomplished without the encouragement and supervision by elected officials. Thank you. Councilman um, Rodriguez, Councilman Torres, thank you for this opportunity and fellow council members. My name is Dan Ackman. I represent, along with the law firm of Wolf Haldenstein, a class action a lawsuit, in two, two class action lawsuits pending in Queens on behalf of buyers at the 2013 and 2014 auctions. A lot has been said about the auctions, but also some has been said about the TLC's response to these problems. In our case, we've been met with constant intransigence and stonewalling. We had to get a court order to get Chairman Joshi to testify, which we finally did. We had to get a court order for the TLC to produce a document drafted by OMB following these auctions about why the medallion values had crashed. And I want to focus on that aspect of it because I think that part of it has been, has received a lot less focus on why the medallion prices went up. I think the key thing is why they went down. And I think what happened is after the 2013, at the 20, before the 2013 and 2014 auctions, the CLC made a series of false and misleading statements, the most important of which are their omissions. They never said to the potential buyers that the CLC would soon license an effectively unlimited number of black cars affiliated with Uber and Lyft and allow them to compete directly with yellow cabs. That's what caused the medallion prices to crash. It wasn't that they, they might have been high, but they weren't too high. Because at the time, medallions were taking in as much as $170,000 a year in net revenue. And even if they were selling for a million dollars, and very few sold at that point, at that, at that amount, but even the ones that did sell at that amount, you can certainly finance that kind of loan when you have $170,000 in gross income, which is what they had at the time. The problem is the TLC let 100,000, first 10,000 extra black cars, then 20,000, then 30,000. Now, then there's 90,000 additional black cars to compare, compared to where there were in 2014. That's what caused the crash. That's what caused the problems. It's not the lenders, it's not the speculation, and it's not really the brokers either. It's what the TLC did after the fact that caused the demise of the taxi medallion. Thank you. Okay. Hi, my name is Galina Kaminker, and I am taxi owner, medallion owner. Um, honestly, I never thought I would be sitting here. That's my worst dream, but I guess it is a reality. So I'm here to um, try to save the industry, and I'm here to speak on behalf of myself, all immigrants, and all people, unfortunately, that we lost nine people that we know the lost. There are so many that we do not know that died because of health implication. So I'm here to speaking up in their behalf as well. If I say today that my family lost everything that we worked so hard for the, for the past 36 years, I'll be lying. We lost our future as well. Do I hold bank accountable for it, for what happened? Far, partial, uh, partially, not fully, but I do hold TLC and the city accountable for what happened to our industry. Um, I am, as I said, I'm a medallion loaner with fortunately 200,000 in loan. Um, I guess I'm lucky I'm not in a million, but that does not um, say that I can make my monthly payments because what I'm currently getting from the leasing company is much less than I, what I own to the bank. Um, I'm expecting that soon enough bank will be after me. They will probably repossess my car, my medallion. Um, and that's the best scenario. The worst scenario, I will still have to hire a lawyer. I will still have to pay the money for the lawyer to go through this process, which I don't have the money, and all the humiliation. Humiliation by, I never wanted this. I never expected this. And um, uh, that's, that's all I can say. Today, I'm here to plea, beg. If I have to get on my knees, I will do. We need you to save our industry. We need you to save our industry. We need the money. We can, we're not looking for bailout. 
and we need the new TLC rules. We can, I'm not for Mr. Uh, Roth. He is, I understand, is a future one to be uh, nominated. We need the fresh blood. He was there during Joshi. She never listened to us. I, I emailed so many times. I was there. Nobody even listened to me. We need somebody who can be fresh blood, and Mr. Roth does not qualify for fresh blood, and he cannot be biased. I, I, By the way, you don't have to stand on your knee because we are here to work. But I guess, you no, know all, how all many I, times I emailed? All I'm saying is that we are here to be there for you guys. I hope so. I, I have faith. Hi, good afternoon, and thank you so much, all of you. Please give us some time and hearing from us about Medallion Value Christ. My name is Ganesh Chaudhary. In the business, almost 20 years, we bought the medallion in 2006. When I bought the medallion, I have a one dream. When I paid the medallion, I have a, that is money will be come from my rest of the life for retirement life. But now, after 2014, now medallion have a big tension. If you have anybody medallion right now, owner, they have a big tension because we can't afford to pay the mortgage now. My higher mortgage, we are losing for business after 2014. That is starting all our plan. Lot of owner is die, already suicided, you know everything. So we have a big problem. So we request all of you, please, please, if you have a kindness, if you have realized with us, the medallion individual owner, so help us and give me some more guess, uh, death forgiveness, the more guess, forgiveness. I request to you, all of you, I am going to one time in the bank, and bank loan officer honestly tell me that no one is your side, no city mayor, no your governor, no your TLC, no broker. So you try to be campaign, go to the city, talk to the them, you can get some help from them. So I'm really appreciate to you. Please help us again more owner suicide or any frustration, so request all of you, help us, give me some forgiveness alone. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, my name is Vita Lanzer. Uh, I'm an individual medallion owner. I've been driving a New York City taxi full-time since May 4th, 1978, over 41 years. Um, the medallion owners had the same technology before Uber and Lyft, and the TLC said we can't use it because it's a street hail. When Uber and Lyft came in, they said it's a different business, it's pre-authorization and then they allowed what they called gypsy taxis because they didn't have medallions that came into the city free to steal our business. They say Uber and Lyft has more lobbyists than anybody. What they should be saying is they have more bribers than anybody, and what were they lobbying for? To rob what I had to pay for my whole life? I had to work for a company for five years to save money to put a down payment on a medallion, and they wanted to rob the value of, of my labor so they can get everything for free. You know, why don't they keep the congestion price for Uber and Lyft because they didn't pay for anything and compensate the medallion owners who they robbed and take away the congestion fee from us because we had an asset that was worth over a million dollars and they destroyed that asset 85% to 90% of it and we shouldn't have to pay for being robbed. Let them pay for robbing us. Let them pay a congestion fee. Let them, co let them compensate us for stealing what I had to work for my whole life so they can get everything for free at the expense of my labor of, of over 41 years. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Oh, I see. I'm okay. The next panel. Nissan Ahmed Mabur Ode. And I, and I can do, and I can, I can do it with that confirmation. Golan Talukter. Janfel Dorji. Nini Godashi.
Richard Pesky. Nino for bias. Yes. Okay. Oh, Nino is here. Okay, good. Dana, Serene. Furba, Lama. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is uh, Richard Lipsky, and I'm <coughs> proud to sit here and stand with the immigrant medallion owners. Um, as everyone has pointed out, this is a city of immigrants, and never has an immigrant class been treated so disrespectfully as this class of immigrants. Um, listening to the painful testimony of the TLC acting chair, I was reminded of the old expression, the operation was a success, but the patient died. <laughs> Everything they did for medallion owners was just this much short of effective, I guess. Um, I'm also reminded of the old saying, please don't help us anymore. <laughs> the uh, as my, my colleague uh, Carolyn Protz has mentioned, there was a, not only a willful blindness here, um, it wasn't that the TLC was an, uh, not an honest broker, they were willfully involved in the destruction of the taxi medallion. Now what's interesting, and I want to give a shout out to uh, the staff that put that report together, it is an outstanding piece of work. As someone who taught for 10 years at Queens College, I would give it an A+, plus, but I'm waiting for the second volume before I'm going to grade it, because the first volume focuses, as the Time story did, on the banks, but the second volume needs to focus on the TLC's regulatory disgrace in undermining the value of the medallion. And as uh, Councillor Ackman pointed out, not only did they take the money, but while they were taking the money, they were funneling FHVs into the system, which is contrapuntal to your narrative, which is the city was only interested in the money because they were taking all this money, and yet at the same time they were taking this money and needed that money, they devalued the medallion. That's what needs to be investigated. Why would a TLC in charge of regulating this environment disregard the revenue stream and allow 130,000 FHVs to come in, why the sea change from being greedy revenue enhancers to being promiscuous FHV enablers? That's a good question to investigate. Thank you, Richard. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Torres, Rodriguez, thank you for what you're doing up here. I really appreciate it. My name is Nino Hervias. I've been driving a taxi since 1984. And since 1990, as a medallion owner, I thought I, I had all figured out and on the path of achieving the American dream. Right now, what I'm facing as thousands of others is the American nightmare, and not because we didn't did our, uh, work the way it should be in facing our responsibilities. We all agree that medallion owners need immediate help to mitigate our loans or buy back our medallions. You, you have to find a way. Our present situation has brought to me and my family 
a dire consequences and to thousands of others medallion owners. We know about suicide, bankruptcies. Each day that goes by with no solutions is one more owner that is losing everything that they've been working for. Solutions, let's focus on solutions right now. Immediate solution that we need. It is bailout or whatever you call it to remedy these to toxic lungs that we have and find out the real value of the medallion, not just anything that can be made up just to look as feel good about it. But the other imme immediate solution that is needed and that much has been said, it is the numbers of Ubers and its imitators cars on the road. They, they are on every single street, hotels, airports, and also doing some illegal pickups by the thousands every single day. They must be cut by, by at least 50% to begin with. That, that is one of the major problems why no one <coughs> makes ends meet. My retirement, I already forgot about it. It has been wiped out. So we need your help as soon as possible, please. My name is Purva Sherpa. I'm from Nepal. So I'm here, I'm talking about personal things. Uh, I come here 2004 <coughs> as an immigrant and uh, I work like uh, seven years uh, without my kids and wife, and I make money from the <coughs> grocery store and consultant, and <coughs> the money I spend for the um, for the all money for the down payment, like sixty thousand dollars, and I brought the medal in six hundred seventy-five thousand. And still, I have loan for five five hundred thirty thousand loan from the signature bank, signature bank, and um, then 2011 I brought this medallions, and uh, so since then two two years later 2013 is every day is crash, and I'm driving like I've been driving like seven days. For eight years, is they can track in my license. The TLC will know that. <clears throat> now I have problem my lower back pains because I sit too much, infections, and uh, so <clears throat> I can't work now. And my partner, I have uh, my partner. My partner passed away because he's got um, too much pressures because all this trafficking, traffic and all this um, torture of these bank loans and uh, this paying loan. And he said, it's every day, oh, what can I do? I, we have to bankrupt this, this. I said, we have to wait. This is America, somebody look at us. That's why I tell him, but, but he passed away on <clears throat> September 25th, 2018. And he drive whole day. And he come back and he got a heart attack. And now his problem is, uh, my medallion is no move nowhere, and TLC uh, suspended, and I didn't work like 10 days, and uh, now I paid money from my wife work, and the money I paid, and that money, I uh, give it to TLC, and then now it's, it's okay, but how to transfer to my name, or I look in the market, Please buy my medallion, 200,000, because Signature asked me 200,000. I say, please, anybody wants to buy, still I'm here, I can give it 200,000. Because that value, the Signature Bank asked me. So thank you so much for having us, for everyone to come here, and all my friends and community. Thank you. Hi, my name is Nina Godashi. I'm a yellow taxi driver and medallion owner. I want you to thank you for your support today. And uh, I want to say zero work is done to help the medallion owners from the city of New York, from the TLC. Nobody is helping us as today. We're just fighting coming to this room. And everybody 
I listen. They try to blame the lenders. They try to put it on the brokers. And 99% is the fault of New York City and the state of New York. They robbed us. They took our money. And now today, they should reimburse all the yellow cabs. So today, I'm fighting for my friends because I'm losing them every day. The person pushed me to buy the medallion. She lost three medallions. She's fighting with cancer, and her husband is fighting with heart problems. So, and they have disabled kid. So what these people at the 69 year old, what they can do right now? So I'm answering, I'm questioning you to give me the answer today about my friends I'm losing every day, the people I know. And I need the support. The city has to do something. We need a solution now. We cannot wait anymore. We die in every day. Our people is fighting every day to raise the kids, to bring food on a table. We're not talking about to make money or have investments. We're talking to bring the food on our tables to our kids today. And nobody, I listen to this room, everybody is trying to blame somebody else to put it on the lenders. We was making enough money. You cannot have one million medallion and zero. Give it to somebody for free. We pay one million and you can give it to someone for free. So how this, how you, they're trying to make a playing field. How are you going to make a playing field when you have a million and zero? How are you going to feel, how are you make a, make a same playing field? It's impossible. It's really impossible. You cannot. When this costs one million and this costs zero and we make the same money. The people, they work on the 80s, age 80, 90, the retirement. What is their money? Where? How are they going to survive? How are you going to make, you're going to make playing field for these people? How? They cannot work anymore. They cannot find drivers. What are these people they going to do? Thank you. Okay. My name is Mr. Chaudhry. My book, and I'm driving Can't hear. 50 for 30 years. Oh. 30 years. And I'm 74 now. And I'm not, right now I'm not working, but very difficult for me to survive because nobody leasing, no diver, lot of problem, everybody complaining, no job, no business. So I'm in that position. I, uh, for me, like lot of diver, those who serve 30 years, 40 years, and they now zero. They have no retirement. They can't sell it, very difficult position. And, and also we want, uh, you know, price and the debt forgiveness because still I have a loan. And I want to uh, if city can do, it's highly appreciate for us. Thank you, sir. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. and. Uh, all of you guys, I'm talking my personally because I'm driving 1987. <coughs> and since then, uh, uh, I bought medallion once 1998, then I lost somehow, then I bought it in uh, 2006, and still I'm driving. But I have a lot of loan, about like $450,000. <coughs> and right now, my pr uh, problem is I don't have no driver. Since uh, like one year, I don't have no driver and I'm 65 years old, and I urge you two guys to help me personally, like forgiveness on my um, uh, loan, and uh, I try to be help myself. I have uh, two daughters, uh, one is college, one is like uh, today, uh, I should go to her fifth grade uh, um, graduation, but I came here for a reason, so I cannot go there. So I try to be, you guys try to be help us, forgiveness or monthly payment for $900 a month. And right now, I have no driver. I have very hard to pay my mortgage for house or mortgage for uh, medallion. 
So this is the issue I just telling you guys, so we help us. Thank you very much. And to Nina and all of you alike, we will not let you down. We, I under hope. we understand. I trust you. We understand, you know, we've been in this battle together. And this, you will know he is here from us in another hearing. We will continue organizing together. As a grassroots organizer that I have been and that we have been, we know that some of the work is at the lazy lady body, but there's gonna be some level that we also are ready to move on and be there with you guys. So listening to the story of this panel, you, you represent- I felt only, so bad sorry, last week. Not only the previous one, members of the public, but the future to come. So when we see your faces, you know, you are you know, the group of individuals that we are so committed to hope, rescuing, rescuing, like, you know, not only what you represent for your family, but what you represent for the city. Thank you. Thank you. The next uh, panel consists of Raul Rivera, Johan Nishman, Gamal Omar, Surin Manaktala, uh, Furby Sering from Woodside Elmhurst, Aziz Khan, Aziz Khan. Jigmees from 8215 Queens Boulevard in Elmhurst. Um, having trouble deciphering name. Vanad, Vanad, 17 Fountain Street. I think we put this earlier. Oh. I think we that you put that one? Yeah, I think earlier. Yeah, some people some of them wrote more than one. Mm. Okay. Okay. Great. Uh, Jorge Caporte. Uh, Shabal chose goes from the Taxi Alliance. Tariq Minur. Hello. <laughs> good afternoon, everyone. We really appreciate for you this big, 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 very big help. We really appreciate. So, sir, we are really, our situation like really in um, hospital, like ICU. So your help will make us big, feel well. So thank you for giving us debt for grants, which is very, very much needed at this very, very hardship financing crisis on us all over. Honorable Raiders, <clears throat> sir, we have no words to thank you. We really <clears throat> appreciate for this. Very important help. This help will not stop another 10th suicide. It will make our faces happy. We used to face, see face happy today, even other today. So this is only with your help we Jews can save our lives. This help will also stop, sell out as our assets, which I just surrender my all kids' life to their policy to the company, because they have to pay the, their mortgage fees and their college fees. So, this, <coughs> excuse me. So send them, this help also help professionals who stay in the city work the New Yorkers. This help, also make us to help our sick families and members in our world who have no other members to <coughs> take care of them in the emergency time. Like my friend, 
His mother is sick, like fourth grade cancer in India. He went there. He have to come back here because he have to pay the mortgage. He have to pay the all bills. So that <clears throat> that's due due to his financial crisis. So he he have to come back USA to pay his loan and other bills. After help, her mother middle left middle in her treatment. So people who unfortunately, this is your help, will also help those people, unfortunately, whose family members sick in the abroad. They cannot go to see them. <laughs> this will help to go them there and stay with them until they get well. Thanks so much with your help. This is big help for our children can go to college very free. We can able to make them tuition free little easy. It's important also. Our, our, so, uh, sorry. So I have another uh, request. So we are facing every uh, most drivers facing robberies. So last week I got robbed by the four people. This they robbed me. This stole my phone. They stole my bag. So please do something. We can able to uh, get the front. Up front, fair, or begin able to see their ID, something like that. Thank you so much. I appreciate for that. And thank you, God bless you all, so council members. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Chair, Stories, and the Rodriguez, and the council members. My name is Aziz Khan. I'm a Madeleine owner and the drivers. I'm working in this industry since 2087. And I had a hope that when I get older, around 60 or 65, I'll be happy with the medal I can give to Liz, and then I can go survive myself with the, my family. But all in even everything has been gone underwater, and you know all the situation has been described, and the TLC, they collect the money from us, and they, they don't answer your question at all. They know nothing at all now, which is not supposed to. And my, my question is, that the Uber and Lyft come without investing any money. They're on the street here and there, and in every corner they're standing there. They wait for the, the passengers, they come from the second floor, third floor, and they create the problem to congestion the, the, the traffic congestion. We don't stay for any, anybody. We mo keep moving. We, go, we don't make the congestion in the city. So to, for, for further congestion, you have to stop the Uber and Lyft further registration. And I am 62 years old, and I have no ability. I have um, physically unfit to drive. And who will my drive cab? And who I, if I hire a driver, they drive one, one week and then left the cab on the on the city and go away. Don't pay, my, don't pay. So how I survive the four thousand dollar, three thousand is the loan, and another one thousand is the uh, tax, insurance, and other things. So who will make four thousand dollar pay the mortgage? And the present valuation, my request, please sit together. And you are the only person who I try to understand us. So sit together with the bank and the uh, private owner and the uh, Maryland brokers. Sit together and find the solution that the present valuation is. How much is the present valuation? $152,000, So fix the price and then wave the left of the money from the bank, we cannot pay that. Whatever the present valuation, we want to fix that one, then so that the bank will get money, or eventually all the money will go to the foreclosure. Then the bank will lose. Then the bank and the private owner will lose. So fix, please, right here, please fix the problem, whatever the price is now, we're agreed to do that one. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Actually, the first time I came in the United States, it was uh, 1984. I'm a medallion owner. I'm driving. And I have bachelor degree at the medical science. And the first time I come in, in jail to this meeting, because of one thing, I forgave my education to work as a driver to put my future to my kids. And what happened, I bought my daughter as a, in, in med, three medical school, 
And I got the time, I couldn't pay the tuition for my kids. And my question is, we are in a superpower of the world, and I'm not gonna talk politician, but we've been served this country more than 20 or 30 years. We are part of community. And this country, they can, it's impossible to look us as a hard worker. People come serve part of the community to help us is, it's, it's something going on because we are immigrant, because we are not enough educated, because we are work hard, we don't have any union support us, because we are weak union or weak people. I don't think if other people or other part of the city, they have suffering or hardship and they have power union and strong union, do not let their people to be in this kind of situation. We have already nine people got suicide. We have people over 70 years still driving. Why the city or why the country, they look to us this lot and we are very hard worker people. We suffering just to survive. So please cancer, look to us as a human being. We are part of community. We're working hard. We're not, and if you make investigation or search about this kind of people, most of these people educated, they are not part of any criminal or anything. These people work very hard, very honest, and hopefully we can solve this issue. We're not gonna talk for details, but look, to us as a human being who try to, to live as good people, that's enough hardship we've been suffer. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Can you please say your name? Gamal Omar. Thank you. Good afternoon, the chairman. I thank you for the work that you have done to put this hearing together. My name is Johan Neyman and you might know me from a different, but my medallion number is for Apple 28. I'm a medallion owner myself. When I bought my medallion in 1992 for $240,000, I thought I was building something for the future. And my idea was from where I, when I came to this country, where the, where the medallion was and when I bought it, I thought that I will have enough equity to have a pension. Now, I did yellow 10 years, and then this four, five, and six start giving me trouble. So I had to lease my medallion and find something else to do. <clears throat> now, there was no one in this industry that cared about individual drivers. I don't want to hear brokers. I don't want to hear owners, <clears throat> the guys who own 50 and 60 medallions. I don't want to hear them come here and crying that they mean with us, they didn't. The Texas and Limousine Commission was nowhere to be found to help us wherever we need. The Texas and Limousine was there for the, make their money on the back of drivers, but never for the drivers. Let's be clear on that. After there was a rule in the book, Chairman, I hope you could bear with me so you could hear my story. There was a rule in the book that was called for owner must drive. It was never implemented. And one day, TLC came and implemented that rule. <clears throat> to the point that we had to pay about $2,500 if we did not drive. So most of us, our medallion was at the broker. So when the penalties came, the brokers turned on us and say, you have to pay it. And we didn't have the money, so we say, okay, I'm taking my medallion. And what they did, they took us to court. $150,000, they, they sue us. As a guy who has a medallion, they sue us. So when they come here today and try to play all this clean, they were the bad actors as well. So we had, I had to settle 
for $15,000 for my medallion. Got my medallion, and I give the broker, Chairman, I want you to listen to me. I give the broker 12 months of payments to pay my medallion. I don't know the exact number, but let's assume it's $4,000. And there were two loans. One loan was a balloon, what we call a balloon in the business, and one was for the principal. So I wrote the check for $4,000. That has to be paid, the balloon and the, the principal. They did not pay, pay the balloon. They paid the principal. And within three months, chairman, I come outside one morning to go to work. And my medallion is not in my car. And my meter is not in my car. And this happened on Memorial Day. They wanted to kill me. This happened on Memorial Day. So when they come here and say, lenders are not responsible and this and that, they killed us. There is a lot of story I need to share with you because drivers, individual drivers, that don't have the medallions no more, have nowhere to go, have nothing to fall back on. I am working right now with Uber and Lyft. It's not easy. I'm fighting every day over there for drivers too. But still, the pain, the suffering, my future, everything is gone. I have nothing today. My medallion is gone, everything is gone. And I didn't ask for that. I wanted to work hard my whole life. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Raul Rivera. I'm a New York City TLC driver. I was born and raised in the Bronx. Mr. Rodriguez, we have a New York City agency that is treating fellow New Yorkers like animals, like criminals. No one gets treated like the New York City taxi driver does. The New York City Taxi and Limousine Commission has grossly failed New York City taxi drivers. More importantly, it has failed your fellow New Yorker. I have been personally sexually assaulted. I have been spat on, cursed at, and so on. Drivers, drivers deserve protection and respect. We move this city and drivers demand a reform of the TLC. Sign my petition and vote for the TLC driver. Do it now. Mr. Rodriguez, 90% of drivers are immigrants with a language barrier. Drivers are being hammered with ticket quotas, both by the NYPD and the TLC. I support Lieutenant Edwin Raymond and the NYPD 12. Let's put a stop to the ticket quotas and let's stop attacking the TLC driver. Mr. Rodriguez, on February 20th, 2019, just days before the election, you agree with me that the Taxi and Limousine Commission needed to be reformed. Stand by your word, sign my petition. Thank you, Councilwoman Kalina Rivera for signing my petition. Thank you, Families for Safe Streets for supporting my petition. I have a message from Margaret Chin, Corey Johnson, Idani Rodriguez, Andy King, Ruben Diaz Seniors, Carlos Manchaca, Richie Torres, and all city council members. Don't ignore the TLC driver. Vote for the TLC driver. Sign my petition. Do it now. New, York, New Yorkers are watching you. Hashtag reform TLC. Hashtag do it now. Do it now. I got it right here. You can sign my petition. Right here. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, my name is Tariq Munir. I am an immigrant uh, here uh, for a good dream. Um, I am uh, a taxi driver since uh, 1991. So 20, almost 27 years I am driving taxi. So first 20 years uh, I drive taxi and save money like $100,000. Then I put that money down payment, 20 years money put down payment and uh, buy the medallion high, high prices. So in this time the prices goes very low. So I mean, uh, that uh, uh, my, my 20, 20 years is a saving and uh, the next seven years are my, uh, I mean, uh, uh, next seven years uh, only goes to my diabetes and uh, sickness only. So I urge to say that uh, forgives that's, that's the uh, loans and uh, uh, the, uh, the loan of, of the value of the medallion and the uh, uh, rest of the money make the lower uh, interest rate and uh, the monthly lower payment to like n less than 900 or uh, less than 900 should be. Thank you very much, please. Thank you. Thank you.
And of course, we are working on reforming TLC. That's what we're doing. So, yeah. So all the voices is important. So this hearing today, and all, and, and all the bills that we have reflect how committed, committed, committed we are to reform the TLC. Thank you. Chairman, would you allow me to make one suggestion to you, if you will? Chairman, can I ask you if you could work towards a pension fund for the guys who lost their medallion? A pension fund that could give them something, because when MT was in trouble, they came to yellow. When the city was in trouble, they came to yellow. Tax, the Tax and Limousine Commission yeah. can give back by give this drive. We, we are committed to explore any ideas, suggestions. So after you leave, uh, when you step out, one of our staff can you know, talk to you and take your ideas, your suggestions. Appreciate it. Thank you Thank very you. much. Ms. Pano. And Warby. Sit on, sit on me from 32-1270 Street, Mohamed Mabu, Akur, Akhtar Hassan, Mohamed Huam, Atiar, Ragmer, Duana Hittes, Hitteson, Mark Esilbert, Excellent, Dalip Singh, Dorothy Leconte. Mohammed Ashahim Sami Megali Miss you may begin Good afternoon my name is Dorothy Leconte, and um, I've been driving a medallion for the past 32 years. I was very young when I started, and I'm, I'm well known at the airport. I'm one of everybody's sisters, everybody's friends, and I'm well known a lot of Haitian cab drivers. And uh, I tell you, with my medallion, I chose my medallion, I used to say, this is my husband because I have two divorces because of the medallion. I never have times. I was very ambitious. I spent my time, I raised two sons. I spent all my time doing this business. For the past seven or eight years, we have an Uber being introduced to us, breaking up the business. I understand how long I used to work very hard, pay my bills. I understand the loan was very bad because I know. I took my, uh, all my contract, take it to a lawyer. They said this is a bad loan, but there's nothing we can do. Nobody can help. So we, we take it easy with it. But I used to work and pay the bill easily. I used to go on vacation. I haven't gone time to go on vacation at all. So I'm looking at this business hall, things going down. My main concern right now is the congestion prices. You could know, we, each customer pay $2.50 plus the 80 cents at $3.30, but Uber only pay 75 cents per customer. And they call themselves sharing ride, they only one person on the car, they pay 75 cents, they got a choice. We have days that, like on Fridays, like this week, this Friday, this weekend past here, was uh, all the uh, uh, gay people outside, they all enjoying themselves. That, that was to be the day that I'm making so much money. I've been driving from Harlem all the way down with nobody picking up. Every corner, we got a couple people waiting for uh, Uber. We can't make our payment. But the thing is, 
with the prices, the way the mortgage goes. I don't understand how a bank calling somebody to say, give me $250,000, you owe me $700,000, forget about the rest. Why the city don't st step in? Because we don't have $250,000. If I have $250,000, I'd be gone by now because I'm still healthy. I could go in outside and work somewhere else and save my $250,000 for my payment. We have another point. I have my friend here, he couldn't talk today, he came too late. He's talking about the accessory, the wheelchair. I understand the wheelchair is the government, we have the federal law, we have to put car in a wheelchair. But his main concern, TLC have to know a person who's old cannot push a wheelchair. He's already an old person, cannot push a wheelchair. He has to be exempt. You have to take another young person as his side. He cannot push the wheelchair. His medallion been on shelf for the past five years because of the wheelchair. He has to take mortgage from his own pocket, from his uh, uh, social security to pay for the mortgage because he cannot work. So all this issue, TLC have to look at it because there's so many young people driving cars, he, they could switch for him to go in, the wheelchair could go to a younger. They could look at the age. I'm 62, I'm a woman. You think I'm gonna push a wheelchair to a car? I can't. But there's so many medallions out there who's willing to go into wheelchair, but TLC will not make the switch. So all this problem here, it's in your hands, and I'm glad that you take all matter to your hands, not now, because I have people who have stroke, I have people <laughs> die in the car. I work seven days a week, and I'm watching young people, people older than me, suffering, sleeping in their own car because they become homeless. They have to rent a car from the brokers seven days a week to drive in a car to make a living because they have no home. Their wife is leaving them, all of these things. So we're waiting for you guys. And I'm gonna keep on pushing and I'm gonna be here in every meeting to see, the mayor promised me he's gonna keep my job. That's what Mayor de Blasio, I met him several times. I go to town hall meeting. I ask him to save my pension because I have nothing left. Because even my house not now, it's under, it, it's merged with the medallion. I'm on a way to lose everything. So Thank please. You. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Chairman uh, Rodriguez and uh, Torres and all other um, very important person and our friends and family. Take my salam, assalamu alaikum. We are here today, we are very crisis. And um, my question is, today is my bad luck. I bought a Metro card, but every tips I collect the $3 from customer for the MTA, but today I buy for myself the Metro card. What is the worth, I don't know. I collect every day 30 to $50 for the MTA. Second thing, sir, you wanna come to city four o'clock in every blocks, Fifth Avenue, Madison, and Sixth Avenue, every block, 30 car. 30 car is 25 car is Uber, Lyft, Bia. Only for two cars is a taxi. When they publish on the TV news or the um, newspaper, they take the picture is news media, couple of taxi, and only for two car is Uber. This is the lying. I don't know who controls the city, governor or mayor, I don't know. We are, taxi industry is the, the sinkhole, is a, like Titanic. Who help us, I don't know. Thank you, Mr. Rodriguez and the Maurice, your question asking the Mr. Chairman, they don't give any answer, I don't know. I have my idea, who is the top of executive in any department, he is the hard body student or Columbia graduate. I think so TLC Chairman is my, behind the next door school, Long Island City, he graduated from Long Island City as his quality. So thank you for um, Rodriguez and the Morris. So I want to help your uh, cooperation, so your proposal and what you describe is very good for me. I'm 56 years old. <laughs> My medallion is a big mortgage. I don't know when I pay off. Maybe next month, next year, my medallion, uh, my car is retired. Maybe I give up the um, bank and I jump on the East River. This is my plan. You know, woman, every woman like a money, not a mouth. So I don't give any money in my wife. I have no driver, last four years. I'm advertising so many my local paper and my media also. Nobody call me, thank you. Good afternoon. I am Mohammed Hawk, 
And I am that Mohammed Haq, you can see me in the New York Times, May 19. How horrible is my family life? I bought one medallion 2014, it was $1 million, and final closing was 1,091,000 plus. And my broker is the Omega, they tow my car five times. Every time they tow, they asking the cash money on the, or the certified said, that's the record here. Last time they took my medallion with the car, March 18, it was now their hand. I have three kids, they are ages eight plus, three plus, and six month. Four month, even I don't have my car. So this horrible situation right now I have for me, after I bought this medallion, I took now more than 12 medication daily, not before 2014, after that. Now I can sleep properly, you know, I don't have car. I spend here around 200,000 and last five years I struggle behind the bills. Now I have three kids, they are two, are not in the school with the feeder. So nothing left, I spend my savings, I spend my hardworking money. Now like I'm newborn here, I spend, I lost everything. So now I have a request, I feel everybody, they wanna help us, we are hardworking people, we wanna move to the city, and also our family, we need to survive, please help. Please, I have a loan now, 915,000. They give me the last time before tow my car, this before seize my car, the 50 year, I have to pay one person, so it's not gonna be help, they need 6,000 right the way. I say I don't have that amount of money. So then they took my car. So now I'm out of work, I'm out of car, and I have a family, three kids. I need everyone help. Please try to realize our situation, our family and personal life. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rodriguez. Thank you, Mr. Torres. And uh, thanks to be Mayor de Blasio. And I got a special thanks to Brian, New York Times reporter. He's a very friendly reporter. He went our home and talked to families, all those information, that's the real, and he published on New York Times. And thanks again. My point is, we need loan forgiveness. Whatever I, we say, a lot of stops, but we need loan forgiveness. And, and the surcharge. The surcharge is like we are almost the last, uh, last thing they, the, the, the governor did, we uh, put our shoulder to surcharge, and that surcharge is killing us uh, rapidly. And TLC, the most unfriendly organization in city. They are really kind of, I'm not gonna say what butcher, but they are. And they kill us. They kill us once because they revoke my license. Tomorrow my drug test, and I just put the wrong date on the, my calendar. And I did explain to them, so they said, no way, your license is going to be revoked. Because tomorrow is your drug test, and you, you, you cannot go because everybody office is closed now. They're not going to allow me to tomorrow drug test. And that's why they revoked my license. And three months, I was hungry with my kids and family. They not even look at me once, and they not give me every, uh, just a new driver. I exam again, I test again, all those things, and I come back on the taxi after three months. And I'm the medallion owner. When I bought the medallion owner, they said you are the ambassador of New York City because you are a YOLO taxi driver. And after that situation is now, you see, you hearing from everyone the situation. 
So I'm not going to go that way. The last word, my mother, son, I want to see you. I said, mom, I can't give you answer why I can't come. My mother died three months ago. And I never going to get her. But thanks to the commission, thanks to Mr. Chairman, I am talking in front of you. That's my luck. And I hope the problem is going to be solved and we're going to back everyone the golden time that taxi was. And TLC, again, TLC is not a right commission for us. TLC, uh, when I heard that they're going to open up office for drivers, I said, oh, again. So that's why I oppose that. TLC not going to solve our problem. If city will, yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. My name is uh, Surin Manaktala. I thank you, everyone, again uh, for uh, patiently listening to all of us. I'm an individual taxi owner and driver, and I'm a member of uh, Taxi Alliance. And uh, I wish we had a bigger union, like all the other unions in the city who have a better voice uh, at the council and the, uh, in the state. When we why we are collecting the taxes for the state, taxi medallion owners are under big stress by MTA state and city rules. It's not our fault that city has too much traffic congestion or MTA can't function properly. It's in fact city and state fault who ignored the dire situation city was going when they issued thousands of new medallions and for higher vehicle licenses and failed to ignore MTA crises and contracts. Please help medallion owners by asking banks to help refinance the loans so their monthly payments can go no more than 900 a month. I have over 200,000 credit debts on my credit cards because I can't keep up the mortgages. Thousands more will go bankrupt and become liability to the city and other tax-paying citizens. We can't keep paying 4,000 a month mortgage and taxes. We have to feed our families and pay our debts. Please understand our plight and make our lives livable. We are the representatives and ambassadors of New York City to the tourists of the world. Treat us like humans. We want a stronger union in good faith to negotiate with the TLC and the state. I don't understand how come the state is governing the medallions when the medallions were originally issued by the city. We want the city to help us negotiate debt forgiveness with the banks. City should pay back to the owners which was stolen from them. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my name is Sammy Megali. It's just a coincidence, you know, usually when I wake up every morning, you know, I go online and read the news and they're talking about loan forgiveness. And I read today that, you know, Mr. Bernie Sanders, if he becomes a president, he's going to wipe off a student loan for $1.4 trillion. $1.4 trillion. Young people, healthy, and they're going to start their life with, like, brand new, not nothing. And how about us? We spent all our life working hard, trying to do the right thing. And now we are paying for a problem that we did not create, a crisis that is ruining our life. The nine people, the nine people that committed suicide, they died fast, but we are dying slowly. Little by little, and it is very painful. It is very painful that since the middle of 2016, in my age, I haven't taken a day off. I didn't take a day off. It's a human rights. It's not just a normal problem. It's a human rights problem. 
labor law says you would work eight hours a day, and you take a day or two, day, uh, two days off a week. <laughs> I'm not even a human. I'm worse than a human, you know. It's like an animal working like, you know. It's, it's, you, uh, an, you, it's an animal. You work and you don't pay, you open your mouth. A few months ago, I, I got a, a, a problem in my lung. And uh, I have to go for a, a, a medical t a test and, uh, and see what's wrong with me. And I took a, a, a week off, a week off just to see what's wrong with me. And I paid my monthly payment. I was short 1,050. My bank, I have the paper here, sir. You want to foreclose my medallion because of 1,050. I'm not even entitled to see what's wrong with me. I have to die just to pay the bank and the congestion tax and the, the MG tax and the 30 cents tax. If, every day I ask myself, what am I doing to myself? I'm dying little by little and what, 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 what am I going to get in the end? I need the vacation. I'm dying to get a vacation, but I can't believe me, believe me Mr. Sherman, I cannot get it. Thank you. <laughs> The next panel, uh, uh, Alex Menard, Doral Groy, Anna Lama, um, can't quite make out the name, but someone from 103, 20, 168 place. Jezvir from 234 East 20th Street, the Bronx. Karamol Hader. Uh, Ruben for 420 42nd Street. Upkar Thind. Mr. Shroudry. Sonam from 4152 63rd Street, Woodside. Mr. Tashi from Woodside. Ahed Ahmed. Mr. Ahmed. Mohammed Hassan. My name is Karimul Haidar. I am the medallion owner. <clears throat> uh, about almost 10 years, I think. Uh, thank you, Chairman, and thank you all councillors and uh, other delegates. And um, uh, hopefully, uh, the New York Times, uh, who has here, uh, when, when we buy the medallion, we have a hope there's good business at good, we can, we can uh, create the good life. After the TLC or city, I don't know about the, the cheetahs. What kind of cheetahs? Because they sell medallion close to a uh, million dollar at overnight. They give to permission to, they don't solve us. They don't give to permission to other department, other, other transportation. That is the cheat, cheating. Because we have a million dollar on my head, and after they sign up free business, other company. So who gonna be take care of us? Secondly, everybody has life. Everybody has human life. Right now we are like a slip. We work say eight day week because we don't have any driver. Six months, I'm waiting for the driver. 
and still now I'm driving my own self. Last night I was in home, one o'clock, my daughter asked me, Dad, can you buy the uh, food for me, like this food? I bought it, but after two hours I go home. I, when I go home, I saw my daughter is sleeping with the hungry, she was hungry. I called, she can wait. That is the life right now we're living. This is the example. I, when a situation created like this, first time I opened my mouth, I called my all friends, he has all friends, 200 people. The, we are, we are, we are, we are making a group and we go to hearing to two years before the uh, uh, TLC public hearing, two and a half years before, I think so. And I tell them, when I, when I get to speak, I say, take the gun, I say to the commissioner, take the gun, shoot us. What the mean? Do something. Otherwise, kill us, because we don't have any space behind. Because we are situation gonna be very, very tough. I understand, I understood before. Because that time nobody wants suicide. I request the TLC, they take the gun, shoot us. That means we don't have any space because in, in tomorrow gonna be dark, our life. We can survive. TLC can do nothing. It's still now TLC can do nothing. We go to, we call the TLC, we make an appointment, we go to Bibari Street and 17th floor, the assistant commissioner Charles Ferry sit down with us. I bring the lawyer, Maurice, he's living in Brooklyn, very nice guy, he tried to help, help us. The lawyer and my other friends and me, three persons we sit down, they talk maybe one and a half hour. If you if you can conclude, that's just in the interest of time. No, give me two minutes. No, no, we we have. Okay, okay, we sir, have, okay, sir. Okay, okay, okay. I think twenty speakers left. So. Uh, okay, no, because it, I work two and a half half years. The, this one, I have yeah. a long history. No, I know. That's why. Okay, it's about that, TLC can do nothing, and right now this is the the city hall, the public hearing. We have a very hope. Because the, the, the New York Times work with, uh, I work with them 15 days, I think so. Brooklyn, Jackson Heights, and Jamaica with the brand, you know, reporter brand. Yeah. And uh, they say the wait for August, the city can do, do something. Okay. City can do something, wait for August. Maybe people know okay. the so city can do nothing, uh, city can, can do something. No. That's why nobody on suicide. We, we, if after August you can so, do nothing, so, so a lot of people we, are going to be suicide. We're going to have to go to the next speaker, but I thank you I, very much. I appreciate sir. your testimony. Do something now, otherwise no. tomorrow going to be another guy suicide because we are, we are, they are waiting for look at the city. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Hello. <clears throat> Uh, my name is Ruben Finkel, um, and um, I'm surprised and uh, thankful that you are so aware of the scope and the depth of the problem and that you are on this fact-finding mission to expose uh, the full extent of the corruption, the obscenity of all the members, all the particular people and elements involved with this cash grab uh, and as a result, the decimation of my industry. Um, <clears throat> one of the things um, that others have uh, brought up that I want you to make further, uh, make further aware to you about is the, um, uh, the TLC's use of uh, penalties and fines to further um, uh, extract monies out of the industry and the drivers and the owners of the, uh, of the 
taxi industry. And as an example, uh, one of the drivers that called the police on an individual that assaulted him with a weapon and assaulted the driver um, physically uh, was fined by the, P uh, the TLC for $50,000 in fines and penalties for calling the police on the assailant. That was their justification for finding the driver. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, um, I think also that um, if, if um, at the end of your uh, exploration uh, that you, um, uh, okay, <laughs> okay. Yeah, just Dramatic. quickly conclude. Okay, that at the end of uh, your uh, investigations that um, you're able to um, um, uh, 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 find liability in all those members, that, all the people that were involved with this, that would be fine. But uh, in the future, if you don't regulate the boundaries, the guidelines of how the transportation industry in New York City is operated, then when automation comes in, we'll be subjected to this uh, tenfold because every car industry, every car company, every uh, transportation service in the world, including uh, Dyson, a vacuum company, is gonna become part of the transportation industry. And without regulation, they'll just come in as Uber did. Uh, and operates with impunity as Uber did. And I hope that uh, you create regulations that create guidelines for future uh, taxi industry. Thank you. Okay. My name is Masan Chaudhary. And I am driving taxi from 1988. And every time I find it was okay before I used to work eight hours. Now I have to 12 hours, 13 hours I had to work in order to maintain myself, my bill, mortgages and everything. Everything is getting very hard and hard. And after the shift, uh, all this a conjunction charge come up fifty sixty dollar goes to the conjunction charge, which is killing us, you know, and some of the passenger is very irritating about this charge and i I would want to I, I would like to let you know conjunction charge Saturday Sunday people complain why Saturday there is why after twelve o'clock one o'clock in the conjunction charge it's supposed to be if you want to put it up in the rush hours conjunction charge, it's okay. Maybe people justify it. Sometimes another one problem we always face, they make it two, Fifth Avenue, two bus lane now. Madison Avenue, two bus lane now. And buses all coming to other lane too. And we cannot move. I pick a passenger from Guggenheim Museum to go to the 40s. Uh, 40th Street, 5th Avenue, and he was over there, about $30 his uh, bill cup come up to, because he cannot move. And this guy finally throws money and get out. This kind of th thing we are experiencing. You're supposed to l let us ride, you know, no stopping, no pick up something, but we can run in the bus lane. In London, they allow the taxi driver to run in the bus lane. No stopping, no pick up, but we are also serving the passenger. Bus is serving more, we are serving less, but we are doing the same job. And we are, mind you that another thing, we are raising money for them in order to finance them, they are, problem MTA, and we are paying money in order to pay this, and we are, we are dying for that thing. And I would like to take care of this matter. And another thing about the insurance, 
you know, the workman compensation, which is kill us because no driver likes to work. My brother, he, he cannot put a driver over there because workman compensation is too much. And, and he died himself. He's 70 years old because he said workman compensation, all these things, it's too much money. Every time I wanted to change the driver, they raised the uh, insurance. This, you know, the, I think you better lo look on this matter. This is a big problem because workman compensation, I don't know anybody, any driver get any money. When you claim for the workman compensation, they don't give money or something like that. They take $10 and give, even they do not give 50 cents to us back. So I never, 30 years, I never had any workman compensation or something unnecessary, everything, all this burden putting on us and taking our, ripping our money. So, you sir, know, if you can, if you can thank you conclude, so thank you. Hello, good evening, uh, <clears throat> Mr. Chair, Councilman, and uh, President, uh, our brothers, and uh, <coughs> the Honorable Press. So my name is uh, MD uh, Mohammed Abdul Mutalib. I'm the driver owner. I, this is my personal history. I bought this, uh, I started uh, the driving 2003. I saving my money to buy the medallion. It was a dream to buy my medallion. So uh, I bought 2009, I bought my medallion $600,000, putting down $100,000 $100, in my cash money. So it was dream to buy and I was dreaming to have a better life. So, since the 2009 is going well until 2014, so after 2014, when we see the different feel, that yellow, when I bought this medallion, so we knew that the yellow is, is, is for the city. Yellow is in city. Yellow means city. So the people trust the yellow. That's why we invested. I invested. I bought it for dreaming my life. So in 2014, since 2009 to 2014, it's going well. So in 2014, uh, we see the different field. It's not, not, for the uh, not for the city for the uh, yellow. It's uh, for the different. We bought it, the medallion, for the <coughs> from the city. And city sold, sold the ground to other person. We don't understand. What's, what is wrong here? So we need the real solution. The many brother asking for the death forgiveness, this and that. So that's my question, is to find the real solution. What is going on? We need our ground back. If we don't get our ground back, it's never gonna happen. Yellow is not gonna stay here. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair and City Council member and New York Times representative. Thank you for hearing. Um, my name is Ahad Ahmed. I'm living in uh, Belrose, Queens. Uh, I am driving medallion taxi cab since 1982. Uh, sorry, 1984, and I brought medallion first tea auction from the TLC. And it was my dream. I, when I go to retirement, 
then I do something, I rent or give it to the broker and I, I can do nothing and stay home. This dream is dead. I, have, I, I had another dream, I earn money and spend my children. One is, I uh, have two children. One is went to the burning house, burning town, uh, upstate, the uh, state university, and was dream was his and my, he become a lawyer. After his graduation, he can go to the law college because I don't have a money, I can afford him. He's still home, no job, and I taking care of my family. My Belro's home, one family, is right now on foreclosure. If somebody uh, buy from the bank or what are I gonna do? I gonna do uh, the state? I don't have anything to leave. Please do something for us, not for me, only for my this situation. A lot of my brothers have, I think, this situation. And we have neglect. We go to the city, pick up passenger from the hotel, completely yellow taxi is no pick up from there. We kick out from the doorman, we go to the pickup, especially I work now at night. And last night I, I dropped the one passenger, 96th Street, 2nd Avenue. I take the Lexington all the way downtown, then come in the Park Avenue, then come 8th Avenue, east to west, north to south, no passenger. Then I think I go to uh, club. There is two, three club on 16th Street between 8th and 9th. I went there and I see so many um, illegal people standing in the uh, super van, something like this, and doorman, one of doormen or some, somebody, okay, get out from here. I say I wanna pick up passenger. I don't get any passenger, if you, one if hour. If you can conclude. Yes, sir. Yes. So he, he, he kick out me. Where, where are we going on a pickup? We can pick up people from the uh, airport. We can pick up for, for, uh, people from the uh, hotel. This is our uh, situation right now. And we, we can drive, you know, uh, right? Uh, a lot of Uber, leave, this and that. And I don't know where I'm going to. I, I have 60 years old and I have a diabetes. And I am working six days, 12, 13 hours. I can afford my family. I can afford my uh, two mortgage house and medallion mortgage. I, I, um, I can because my, my mother was hospital and she died uh, after uh, one week. I can work like two, three weeks, I behind. And my broker took the car one day. One guy come like 12 o'clock at my home, knock door and say, give your car, uh, key. I said, who, give your taxi key. I said, who are you? He said, I'm detective. They took the car and after uh, one, uh, next day, I borrow money from my uh, relative, my uh, brother-in-law, sister-in-law, and still I don't give them. I pay $6,000, then they give me the car. Right. Thank, Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you for all of you here. Thank you. Uh, my name is Mohammed Hussain. Uh, I drive taxi uh, since uh, 1996. Uh, I'm sorry, 98. And I'm a member of Taxi Worker Alliance. I bought a taxi from last auction, uh, 2014. And uh, I invest here is 138 grand, and I work seven days, sometimes more than 10 hours a day. I work as same as doggy, so I don't have a time for my family and money. 
nothing. I even I don't have a, enough money to pay my bill. So uh, my broker uh, did not tell me anything about the loan agreement. What is the bill loan? Even I don't know. I paid for lawyer, but I don't have a lawyer. The broker tell me completely lie. My income is two and less than $25,000. How I get a loan, 750 grand. I want to talk to the New York Times, Mr. Ryan. He explained to me my loan of agreement, and he asked me how long he spent to sign this agreement. And, and I, I told him I spent only this sign 10 to 15 minutes, not more than 15 minutes. And I'm asking to Mr. Brian is here, so how long you spend time to read this paper and you sign this paper agreement? And he said, I need one hour. So my paper is everything here. So he's a reporter, he's a super fast. He is a not ordinary people. He needed 24 uh, uh, this time and I needed 48 hours. And I have a, another question. The how, how set the price, the Medellin auction is high bid price. I said the New York State is, is uh, robbed my money. Uh, city, how they work, sell to the Medellin, and how give to the permission to the work to the app company. The city, the know, the state, the know what the going on, because I'm the last person to buy the Medellin. The state, the, they knows what the going to Medellin. This is the artificial, the, they know their Medellin price will be dropped, is the balloon. Is it, 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 you know, this everybody knows, so I need to money back. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. So, the next panel, Jacqueline Hassan. Thank you, thank you. Masoon Shodari. Shamuel Malkil. Abdul Rat. Purba Sherpa. Elhi Indiai. Mohammed Hassan, Jano Bake, Jonathan, Mop Kadir. So, if there was anyone from the public that I did not call, sir, you may come. Greg, and you, if you testify, it's only about this topic, okay? Great. Yep, please. Come in, if you haven't, yeah. You may begin, sir. You may start. Good afternoon to you. My name is Mr. Wosini Celestine. I've been driving a uh, taxi since 1979, Yellow Cab 1982. I purchased my medallion on 1983. Now, after 40 years driving, I still can walk, even I got a can, but I'm still, I'm able to walk. My medallion sit on storage. My, my, my medallion come on wheelchair. My medallion was uh, a regular medallion. Now, the TLC told me is Mr. Como, is uh, the state, put the medallion on wheelchair, which is I'm not able to drive the accessible car and then to push the to push someone. So my medallion sit on storage since four years. I never get I never make one penny on it. I got to pay the medallion every month. 
I think I can say this is the main reason I'm here. And then the price, the price, the medallion come down. I cannot pay the full amount. I got to pay the interest every month. Because in case I lost the medallion, they're going on after my hours. I've been working for 40 years. So I'm here to ask you, please do something for me, at least to get an exemption for me to, to purchase a normal car to drive because the wheelchair, I cannot do it. If I left the medallion sit on, on story for four years, that means I cannot drive it. So please help me out. Thank you. All right. All of my parents, very painful. I am one of them. So <clears throat> I appreciate all of you. Thank you. My name is Shubesh Boiragi, medallion owner. My medallion number is 4W31. I bought it last auction 2014. After body it, I am killing myself. I am driving since 1998. Before I didn't buy medallion <clears throat> because it's too much headache. So I drive taxi from Omega Brokers weekly, weekly lease. Once a day, I went to deposit my lease money to Omega. Her name is Eleni. She told me, why you take <coughs> lease from us? You have to own boss. <coughs> Today is the last auction. She took me to the boss. His name is Sabas. He told me, if you interested to buy, you have to fill up like 800 to 900, you can get it. Otherwise, not possible. Then, <clears throat> then sounds 50 50. If you fill up to 9 to 10, uh, 10 hundred thousand, it's 100 percent. If you Fill up 900, um, 100 to more, you 100%, you get it. So day by day, I am going to seek. I cannot drive. <clears throat> I am driving four years along. No driver, because this is handicap, no driver. No driver cannot like it, handicap. I am right now sick. <clears throat> I am, I have home mortgage, I have three kids, one going to university, another one Stevenson High School, another one Gift and Talent School. I take care, I cannot take care of them. Little of my children every day crying, where, where is my dad? Where are you? Come home, don't go, I don't like too much work. <clears throat> But I am very, very frustrated right, uh, right now. Please summarize. <clears throat> so please help, help us. Right now, TLC price is one, not more than 150. If you give me 150, I can afford it. If you mortgage like 150, I can afford it. Otherwise, I have to deposit it. Thank you, sir. Please, please help us. Please help us. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon to you, our Chairman Rodriguez and Torres, and the old, all the City Council. Uh, my name is Mr. Uh, Jonathan Janovix. I'm driving since 1970. Um, <clears throat> I bought my first medallion with my brother many years ago for nine thousand dollars, and over the years. I've seen that the medallion prices went up and what I sold, I bought. And the last, the last time I bought was in 2006. 
because uh, I've seen for, for, the, for the last 30 years or something that the price kept on going up and that was a prosperous business. So when I bought in 2006, and I bought from my friends and uh, my, my, my relatives close to $100,000 and also with the money I saved over the years to put down on a medallion, which would be ultimately would be my American dream. From the American dream became the American nightmare. I'm, all, I'm single, I'm all by myself, I work seven days a week. Recently I, I, lost, I lost my driver over a year ago and I can't make ends meet. Uh, I, we need, and I need def desperately the uh, medallion, uh, I mean uh, the debt reduction program that you, you're talking about, that they're gonna bring the, the, uh, um, the, the mortgage every month down a little bit, a lot. Currently, I'm paying with insurance and everything close to $3,800 a month. I cannot make it. Uh, <clears throat> I'm on the verge of about going into bankruptcy because the business is not there because of Uber, because all the fluctuations of the fluctuation of Uber, over 100,000 cars on the streets. No one, no one, no one even wants to 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 uh, to, uh, to hire uh, to hire a, to hire a yellow, you know, cab. Everyone, everyone stands on the corner with the, with the phone, Uber, Uber, Uber. So, and besides the point, when I bought in 2006, they had the, they had the program Alternative Fuel Medallion. I went into it because I, I liked a, a bigger car, but, but the whole system was, was, uh, was, was very flow, you know what I mean? I had big tanks in the back. My, my, my car didn't take no, no, uh, no gasoline whatsoever. Because of that, because of that, I had check engine light and I had to go to thousands and thousands of dollars just to repair the, the thing and because no one in New York City knew how to repair the system. And sometimes, sometimes I left the car for two or three months in the taxi limousine commission in the storage because uh, you know, no, no one knew how to fix that system. I liked, I liked the big car and that's why. Because of that, I went to a debt of $90,000 which I'm about to lose my medallion because of the whole situation. Thank you, sir. Okay. Good afternoon. My name is Dorina Nicescu. Uh, my issue is for uh, my uh, refinancing. My medallion, it's, uh, I was rent to the broker. My husband, I lost my husband a couple of months ago. So after my husband died, the broker still come, cut my check. My last uh, check for this month was cut and he sent me a big letter, all expensive you have to pay. So now I'm in the middle to the bank to negotiate my loan to the bank and broker. So my loan is still high and I, I don't have money to cover. And it's not just my loan, I have expensive, my place where I live, my rent, my other expensive and my funeral husband, I was not ready to bury my husband. My husband fight for this issue. Look, those old letters my husband make. He came for all the protests. Two weeks ago, I went to Albany. I spoke with the senator, I showed the letter. He make a copy for me. And I'm in between bank and broker. The broker, he want to, uh, he invite me to do bankruptcy. After, if I do that, he can take my, 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 my asset and to, uh, he's gonna sell. That was my retire, me and my husband. We work, we pay taxes, we are honor people in this country. I have a good job, he, he worked very hard, but he died, he cannot take the pain. He have issue We health, hard, hard problem. And I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm, my age, my retire is gone, my husband is gone, and the bank, when I, they called me last week, they say we cannot do better than that. The, my loan is still high, and my broker still cut my, my check every month. I don't know next month how my letter is gonna be, my check how it's gonna be. So I live after my husband died with those issues. Can you help us? Can you help me? I don't know what is gonna happen. Thank you. I'm sorry too. Chair Torres, Chair Rodriguez, General Counsel, Greg Waltman, 
um, speaking from G1 Quantum Clean Energy Company. Hearing the testimony from um, medallion owners and, you know, comes down to a few issues. You have market mechanisms that are, have conflicts of interest, like um, Chair Torres pointed out, that sometimes the administration's interests in market making activity, whether it be Uber, undercut medallion auctions, and then that leaves the debt burden. And then you have Chair Levin, who spoke upon collateral debt obligations, or a CDO that could be packaged to and tethered to the city, so you could refinance and offset the loss that medallion owners have incurred. But then it also becomes, okay, well, is Uber better structured and position the market, other Lyft better position market, does the TLC need to restructure its business to an extent in that, in that, uh, within that regard? And, and, and when we, we talk about collateral debt obligations and securitizing them to offset the debt that these, you know, these owners have incurred, you, you know, where you, where you turn to the revenue, I mean, I don't wanna go back to solar and parsing through the Green New Deal, Amazon value narratives and, and, and those things. But when you can contractually um, originate that asset from New York, a solar contract, and then offset that CDO that these, these people have incurred and the debt that these people have incurred, then you can create the type of synergy you need to to then advance and, and kind of you know kill two birds with one stone and leave that type of issue in the value lake where it belongs. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm not to speak very well because I'm not an educated person <coughs> in America. I come here in 1995. I come, my one neighbor friend, and I believe him in too much. I started taxi driving 1998, and I make some money, and I go to Ohio City, and I lost $150,000. And I come back to New York, and my room, roommate, he want to buy a medallion. He has only $1,000, $1,100 his account. He want to buy one medallion. And then he asking me money. I said, okay, we can buy together. I have a, some problem in Ohio problem, so you can buy your name. I can give you half of investment. We invest 60, 60, 120,000 dollars. 2007, we bought first medallion, 7F19. And then we refinanced the first medallion to buy second medallion. He gave me 160,000 dollars to buy medallion. Melrose give me a money, just one word. He said that he was my partner. And then Melrose gave me a another medallion, 1F18. And after that, my partner, he sued me in a Supreme Court. He said that he's not my partner. I am his driver. Yes, I am his driver. Why he give me $160,000 to buy second medallion? And I lost the first division court. Josh the, Josh the uh, guilty me $210,000. This is 9% interest. I do second division. And second division said judgment is not correct, but my lawyer, they don't work for me. The lawyer, he bought my lawyer because he do false sue me. I have so many proof. I cannot speak very well. And I told my lawyer, don't do hearing. And I lost the second division. I paid him $255,000 in a cash. I have a loan right now, 740. I tried last year in my bank, Aspire Bank, give me the modification, <laughs> they don't give me, I give only interest, and this is my medallion last November, and then after I paid another $3,000 in, in fine, then he give me medallion back. I, I cannot afford it, $4,000 mortgage, please give me a modification. Then last week he give me the modification, and I still working. I don't want to do chapter uh, seven because I bring some money by house, my country, and I buy house this country, and I, I, I feel bad. I can say to in city, New York City, I have a highest price, medallion price, 1.3 million. I have a medallion, my, my medallion price cost. 
I still feel bad is that they do false against me and they choose me. I lost $500,000. All money I lost, my, my income money. I have a loan 740. Still I do continue my medallion. Please help me to punish my partner. Please help me. I, I, I explain to expect to you and I, I, I need help to punish another, my 719 medallion honor, how he sued me in a false suit in the Supreme Court. Thank you, sir. Please help Thank me. Thank you. I, I appreciate it too if I, if I do help me to do something to my partner. Thank you. Before they have, they have, they, they have also, in a buy house, they bought also, uh, also the, in bronze apartment, how they do false suit. Please help me to do something. Right. Thank you. Uh, before uh, my co-chair, Councilmember Torres, uh, officially close the hearing, I would like to say that uh, we appreciate the great job that the committee, the Councilmember Torres chair, and all the staff for the great work that they've been doing for the last couple of months. And I know that their contribution will be very important as we from the Committee of Transportation will continue looking at how to bring a solution to this crisis. So this cannot be yes, another hearing two months from now. As we said before, this level of crisis uh, demand uh, action right now, and we will continue working together to be sure again that we give the dignity, the respect to all the men and women the drivers, but those individual medallion owners, because we have said over and over, over, the city has failed. And this is my stand. And I, it's not the first time that I say, I believe that we all the new fact that the committee chair of our council member Torres, you know, were able to discover, we will continue making a strong case. And we as a city have to be responsible. The plan cannot waste alone. We cannot wait for another individual medallion owner or driver to take away their life. And that's our call to any men and women that we know that work so hard, please. It doesn't matter how tough the moment is right now. You think about our families before, you know, in those tough moments, you think or you thought go through your mind about you know committing suicide. So hopefully we will become stronger and we are committed to you know get there. So with that, the co chair of this committee, Council Member Richard Torres. Uh, oh, this here. Uh, thank you, Council Member. Um, and I'm sorry, sorry the co committee is the co chair of this hearing. No. No, thank you, Council Member Rodriguez. Uh, he's, thank you for your partnership, um, there's no question that the city failed uh, the driver owners, um, but and I want to assure each and every one of you that this hearing is only the beginning, that we are committed to finding a solution because there should be no New Yorker who is stripped of their livelihood or stripped of their retirement, who's contemplating suicide. All of you did everything right. You played by the rules. You worked your heart out. You trusted the city of New York. When the city of New York tells you something, you trusted us and we failed you. And we have to make restitution to you and we have to do right by you. Thank so you. I want you to know that your well-being is a priority for the city council. And I'm gonna work very closely with the chair of the transportation committee, Adonis Rodriguez, with my colleagues like Brad Lander, and work with TLC to find a solution to what is genuinely a humanitarian crisis. We can no longer afford to turn a blind eye to the suffering of you and your family, uh, because all you want is not a handout. What you want is a fighting chance at a decent life, yes, and, and that's what you deserve. So with that said, I thank you, Councilman.